Hi everybody, this is Bulletproof Underwear, episode number eight. Woo! <laughs> eight whole episodes. Yeah, so we've got our extra super duper special guest, Mad Mo Yukon, alias Toby Pace. Hi everyone. All right, and we got our co-host, Sexy Flexy. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's me, Flex. And I'm Yam Juice. Uh, so, what's going on? beautiful Saturday morning here in the Yukon. It's early in the morning, so I'm civilized, no wine. I've got my coffee and Baileys and Kahlua. <laughs> <laughs> Baileys and Kahlua. Here. Yep. Well, I was run out, run out of Grand Marnier, so <laughs> you got to make do. Well, you know, if you just put the, the Baileys and the, and the Kahlua together, you don't even need the coffee. Well, <laughs> I guess that's We'll see how the morning progresses. All right. Well, you know, I've already had my two cups of coffee. I'm uh, switched over to that. You know, it's like, <laughs> what is it? Uh, it's 10 o'clock our time. So you're in Canada. You're in the same time zone? I'm tame, same time zone as you. It's 10 o'clock here. Yep. It's noon, noon here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. All right. We switched up the amp now from... All right. It's always amp. good to get our drinking... You know, situation. Get down. our drinking out of the way first. All right, we switched over from the M3 to amp now. <laughs> yeah, are, are we just gonna devolve into like you know smoking crack on the show? <laughs> <laughs> are, are we? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nobody told me. Screw this caffeine. It's just not. It's not hardcore enough. We're you know from now on, it's just gonna Oops. be straight up smoking crack. <laughs> I'm, I'm at the store the other night. And uh, I was, cause I was, as usual, pulling an all-nighter. And uh, I was picking up some caffeine beverage. And the guys, like, behind the counter was all jazzed up. I, 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 I was thinking caffeine. Mm -hmm. And he's like, remember in the old days, man, when it used to be Coke we got all wired up on? <laughs> I was like, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Old days, yeah. I remember the old days. Um <laughs> yeah, and he's like, but yeah, he, it was funnier now because I, I, I was thinking that it's like we drink all this caffeine, and it's like in the eighties it was cocaine, and then in the nineties it was meth, and now it's caffeine. Everybody's drinking the. the we didn't do that the, stuff up here. The energy drink. Well, down here in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. That they, they I think, got. I think the drug of choice in most, most parts of Western Canada is uh, BC Bud. Oh wow, wow! Well, you must have to import that. You can't grow that stuff there, huh? <laughs> no, you can't grow any of that stuff here. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have like almost twenty-four hours of sunlight in the summertime. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, no, I'm a girl. I don't do that stuff. I just <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm getting hollered. I'm doing the podcast, honey. <laughs> Yeah, I want to say hi to her. Okay, come come here. Come here, Ann. Say hi to the... This is like the the only classy member of our clan. Hi. Come here. Come here. Get on camera. Yeah, Bend your face down. Come hi. on. She can't see you. She can't see you. Hi. You, you can... Wait. I'm a mess. I hear you every I'm time. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Let's. I see your hand. There you are. She's hiding behind the Mr. green screen. to Ann. Okay, she says hi. She says hi, and Anna's like grumbling I that I. I asked if you would come on too, but uh, I don't know if you will. Well, yeah, bring him on. Bring him on. Whoa. He's upstairs in his man cave. Okay, honey, honey, would you please stop hollering? I'm doing my little podcasting. <laughs> See, I am the man here. I am the man. <laughs> <laughs> You ever watch um, uh, the guys that do South Park when they did that uh, movie about the Mormon? I with the porn. I didn't see the movie, but I saw the I episode. Did, the the song did. "Now You're a Man, a Man, Man, My Own." Oh no! Oh, I gotta see got, that. Got to see that song on YouTube. I just watched the South Park uh, Netflix last night. It was about the making. Uh, it was a, a documentary about how they do an episode. It's called Six Days to Air." Mm -hmm. And they, they yes. write and put it on the air in six days. That's how they do it yeah. every week. Yeah, and they procrastinate about what's going to actually be until almost to the bitter end, and then they go crazy. It's amazing <laughs> how that they can do that. 
-hmm. and their ideas are so twisted and 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 bizarre. Nothing sacred. Nothing. Oh yeah, everybody in Hollywood probably That's hates what them. I love about them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet. <laughs> 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 So what do you guys do when you're not uh, playing games? Like, I know you do glasses. I'm a glasses yeah. guy. Yeah, what do you do, Flex? Uh, I spend a lot of time with my daughter. She's 11, so mm -hmm. she's, like, right, right now, kind of high maintenance because I get to spend time with her, and she actually responds to me without, you know, like, yelling mm -hmm. at me or being profane at me like older, young, you know, daughters yeah, do. Enjoy it while you can. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm kind of enjoying that, and yeah. uh, I spend a lot of time outdoors. I walk a lot and uh, fish, hunt. Um, what do you hunt? Mostly birds. Um, I just don't have the heart to shoot deer. I'm sorry. I'm just one of those people. I can't shoot them, but mm -hmm. birds don't bother me. And uh, my daughter, she uh, she's interested in it. So you know what it's like. Something to get kids interested in other than trouble. Anything that keeps them out of trouble is a good thing. So You'll give her lots of good memories. My dad took me hunting all the time when I was a kid growing up. And that's what we did. We went bird hunting, usually for uh, grouse is what we have up here. Wow. They kind of like turn. And, uh, yeah, hunting and fishing and picking berries. And, and we did go out caribou hunting a bit. But, uh, yeah, I agree with you. It's really hard to um, It's really hard to kill an animal when they've got those big brown eyes looking at you. Yeah, I know. Aww. But, you know, this day, if I see a grouse on the ground, if I'm driving down the highway and there's grouse on the road, I'll stop and throw a rock at the little bastards and run up and then twist them. Because <laughs> they're good eating. Have you ever bagged yeah. one with a rock? Yeah. Really? Well, they, they, well of course. They, grouse, they all, they're like little um, chickens. It, it like, well, they can, they'll go on the side of the road or on the road in the, really early in the morning. And just stand there. And they're just eating little bits of dirt so they can digest their food. So you just walk up as far as close as you can without them moving and just huck a rock at them. <laughs> Stun them. them. Who needs and, any uh, bullets? Who needs a gun? And you run up, no, you don't need bullets. And then you just run up and, you know, wring their little necks and Stuns throw them in the back of the car and keep going. Oh, my God. You are Canadian. <laughs> or, you know, uh, when I used to have um, black labs, and that's where my handle comes from. I had uh, some really great labs that were just fa fabulous retrievers, and one was named Toby and the other was named Pace. But if I'd go for hikes with them out in the bush, sometimes they just dashed off into the trees and uh, come back with a grouse in their mouth. It was great. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So so you just cook a grouse like you'd cook a chicken? Yeah, they're, the only part of them that's really good for eating is the breast because there's not a whole lot of meat on them. So... Um, you take the breast and uh, it's kind of a nice dark meat because they're wild and uh, slice it up and dredge it with a bit of flour and saute it a bit and then uh, make a nice cream sauce with some mushrooms and onion and serve it over rice. Oh, still are good, man. Good eating. God. Good. <laughs> Damn, I ain't, and I ain't never had no grouse. Mm. And I'm grousing about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you you have you're no stranger to uh, hunting. Well, yeah, I haven't hunted for a long time, but yeah, that's how we grew up was hunting and fishing and picking berries. I still go out and pick berries all the time. In fact, I'll probably take off this weekend and go up the mountain. There's a mountain beside us here, and I'll go up the mountain and pick um, blueberries. Ooh, the blueberries be out. <laughs> couple of weeks the um, cranberries the low bush cranberries will be ready pretty soon and the high bush are probably ready now and in my backyard there's lots of wild raspberry bushes I can go and pick anytime I want some berries in the house but wow I love blueberries I love all berries mm -hmm. no they're fun it's fun to pick and it's good exercise as long as you keep away from you know where the bears are eating just stay, leave them alone and you're fine have you ever seen a bear when you're out running around mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, man, if you don't mess with them, they don't mess with you. Yeah, unless there's something wrong with them. Yeah, or if they've got, like, cubs. They might be a them. killer bear. They might, might mess with your cubs. We have yeah. bears in the neighborhood all the time around here. So, you know, if you live, you know, we live in the middle of the wilderness here, and there's people, and, you know, there's garbage or food smells and barbecuing or whatever. Like, we, if you look at the Yukon, we are in the middle of nowhere, and there's forest all around me here. And, yeah, the bears come in 
into our yards and down the streets and everything all the time. We have to keep things closed up and stuff so that they don't come into town. Wow. So otherwise, otherwise you have to kill them. It's just not very nice. No, you know? don't want to kill a bear. Let him. Let him be. Let him do his berry things. Let him get his bear ass out. <laughs> <laughs> Surface him in the suburbs here in Minneapolis and St. Paul, and uh, people sight them and stuff. And typically, they go, you know, like wander off on their own. They wander back off into the woods and stuff. But as long as they keep away from garbage and stuff, otherwise, um, once then they get the kind of garbage, man, they're they're tough. Well, yeah. So wildlife officers here, they say, once they get into the garbage, it's like crack cocaine to them. They are addicted. And it doesn't matter how far they fly them away to relocate them, they come back. So you just have to kill them, which is not very good. So. No, no, no. So okay. so they make a beeline back for your garbage. They're like, hmm, I got some good stuff there before, so I'm going back. Yeah. So we keep our garbage in the garage. And, uh, and then our compost, we have it in the backyard in a secure location. So... <laughs> the president is in a secure location and the garbage is in a secure location. The president is taking out the garbage right now. <laughs> so uh, so Flex, you live in a you live in a major metropolitan area, you know, the Minnesota uh, Twin Cities area. That's that's like a, a major urban center, right? But are you in the city city or are you in the suburb? What's what's the deal? I live in the suburbs of the Twin Cities, so like I'm a stone's throw from St. Paul, which is one of the bigger cities. Um, I live in a uh, area that's mostly industrial parks, so it's like uh, what do you call them? Uh, industrial malls, like where it's just businesses and stuff. So people get uh, um, broken into a lot around here because they the people come out. And they see the businesses, and they know the businesses have burglar alarms. But when they find out there's houses in back of the businesses, then they're like, hmm, gold mine. <laughs> and if you leave your garage doors unlocked, or your shed unlocked, or anything like that, man, everything disappears. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I already know what, what you're going to say, uh, uh, Mo, because uh, you, you posted this thing about the locking or unlocking, and you don't lock. Yeah. No. Well, we no. We didn't used to. <laughs> well, you know the reason well, is because Canada Canadians are just are, better people. They're just not. <laughs> oh, true. People are people, but uh, I don't know. I, I, maybe there's a little bit of a different culture. Like lots of people lock their door if they're at work or whatever. But when you're at home, our doors are unlocked, and we don't actually lock our door. But that we come in and out of all the time, we leave it unlocked. Wow. Um, problem. Well, Maybe I should lock it now that this is going on <laughs> out there to the world. <laughs> we live so what's your street live address and uh, what's Google Earth? <laughs> let's uh, let's show that up. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> and this is her schedule too, folks. This is when um, she leaves the house. Yeah. Yeah. So, but in the old days, like when my dad was growing up here, um, that was you know before the Alaska Highway was built, and there was not very many people here, and it was just basically cabins and stuff nobody ever locked anything because if someone needed help or they were cold or whatever they needed to be able to get in like oh. the concept of locking your door is like why would you lock your door people can't get in then right. so. <laughs> it's like not have to keep below it. <laughs> so you know if it's 45 below out you want to be able to a person to come in and get warm but anyways it's not like that now now you know we've got the highway and we've got like you know, 26,000 people here in town it's a big place and yeah well you know I, I, I like when I said Canadians are just better people and you said people are people well, yeah, I agree people are people but Canada mm -hmm. makes them even better I think mm -hmm. I think they're nicer you guys are nice <laughs> yeah they talk about Minnesota nice but I don't experience it much mm. well you guys are closer to Canada Canada is the capital of nice and you guys are near earth <laughs> It. And, uh, and here I play just about everybody that I play with on the on the game there is from the states there's a few people from Britain and other places but almost everybody's from the states and I've yet to meet an unpleasant person everyone's a lot of fun to play with and all really nice guys well our friends uh, you know well you know that there's some not entirely sweet lovable chaps 
occasionally That's my populating. Button. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about Call of Duty. It brings out the the aggression and and the the dickheads like nothing. I think it's the whole internet thing where people are anonymous. Like you even see it on online forums, people just being a disassociation. Present. But um, yeah, but if we, if we were on Call of Duty and we had like little pictures like this here we have on here where we, everyone could see each other and know who they were, I bet you people would. Uh, they would probably tone it down. Nice. Yeah, it, yeah. Just be on the internet the same way as if your grandma was in the same room with you. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, I'm gonna shit down your neck. You know, it was like, yeah. oh, grandma's right over there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I am a grandma, and I am playing on there, so... <laughs> that is pretty cool. Call of Duty Grandma. That's right. Wow. So your hair looks a little shorter than some of those uh, Facebook pictures that I've seen before. Yeah, I got it um, chopped off a bit, and I'm trying to grow the gray. I've been dyeing it blonde for some time, but now I'm just putting platinum foils in so I can just turn into the silver hair that I have anyways. Yeah. Amy Lou Harris. Yeah. Yeah. So those that picture on the website on the forum that was a picture that that was a, from, from a series of pictures I had done for my 50th birthday to celebrate turning 50. So I had um, two different styles done one with uh, one outfit and one that was a little bit racier for Sweetie, where I snuck his base out of the house and his some of his Beetle posters and Beetle paraphernalia oh, and we had. Oh Jesus! Ooh, did that rip. And uh, I don't know if you know that. Um, Rolling Stone magazine, where there's a cover of a person lying across a bed holding a bass or something. Um, but anyways, we recreated that shot. Oh wow! And that was a. I bet he appreciated you know, like, the hell out of that. It was kind of a birthday present to him. So yeah, he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> now, see any of you guys out there who who know how to hack into people's internets and their and steal their files? Uh, I'll give you good money if you can find that picture. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do I have to pull out? Do I have to pull out dollar bills again? Now, let's see. <laughs> let's see. Oh. I still got to send that money to Flex here. Oh, where's my money? I, I, my wife must have been through my desk here. <laughs> yeah, you guys still have dollar bills. <laughs> well, do we, what, what do you have? Loonies. Loonies. It's a coin. Wow. It's a dollar coin, and it's got a picture of a loon on it, so we call it a, call it a loony. Hmm. And instead of $2 bills, we have a coin that's got, yeah, I can't remember, I think it's got a polar bear on it, and we call that a toonie. A toonie, because it's two loonies. They quit mint, minting uh, dollar coins here because it costs too much because of the metals they used. Well, they've got to change the metals. So ours, is, ours are cheaper than uh, paper. It's, it's, it's heads. And, we just, and we're phasing out the penny now, too. That's a good idea. I hate mm -hmm. pennies. Whenever I get pennies and change, I just let the place keep them because I don't even want them in my pocket. Yeah, and they cost more than they cost more than to to make them. They're worth as well. So see, everything about Canada is smarter and better. I tell you, I, oh, I've got to okay. move there. If it wasn't so damn cold, I'd go there. <laughs> you got to go to BC. It's not too bad there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So so yeah. how far north are you? Like uh, okay, so picture Canada about the size of your video window. You know, the bottom was the border with the U.S., and the the top is the very highest point in Canada. Where, where the? Well, you don't. You know where Alaska is. Yeah. We're right beside them. We're adjacent to them. Oh wow! Wow, that's pretty damn that's, north. It's up there. So how how mm -hmm. long of the daytime is it? Uh, is it lit up in the summer? Well, it gets. It stays laid out at the, you know, the height of summer. Probably the sun is um, above the uh, the horizon for about twenty three hours, but then when it goes below, it just just barely dips below, so the sky is still light out. Wow! So basically, we have twenty four hours of sunlight or like daylight. It just kind of gets, you know, how it is um, in the morning, just when the sun's just coming up and the sky is light, right. but it's not. That's the way it is from. Well, you can find your way around without tripping and killing yourself. You can. Well, when we, were, when we were growing up, it was kind of fun because, you know, the school's out and you're outside running around playing softball or 
or whatever you're playing all night long, running around in the trees playing, like you play war games in the trees, running around in the forest around the house and everything, and all night, all day, all night, play, play, play. Yeah, so <laughs> but then it, time, it's the opposite. It's just dark out all the time. Yeah, so it's always dark, probably. Yeah, it gets, well, the sun um, comes above the skyline for um, like two or three hours. Mm. So, but just it just kind of comes up and goes right back down again. So, so it's yeah, a lot darker. That's pretty <laughs> wacky. To... But we have ways of keeping things interesting. We have lots of um, festivals and things that we do here too. Uh, I was going to say from getting cabin fever. You have to do something. Yeah, we have uh, we have frostbite music festival and sourdough rendezvous and all sorts of other festivals we do. And kitchen parties. Wow. So your husband is a musician and he sings. Yep. I'll bet yep. you sing too, right? Uh, I used to do a lot of singing in my younger years, but I don't now. The one singer in the house is enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I used, to, I used to get called on to sing at weddings and things like that, but it's not my profession. But um, but when when Paul and I are driving around, if we got you know music playing in the car, we'll sing along to it together and harmonize together, which is kind of fun. All right, all right. So Flex, do you sing? I know that you play the hell out of your rock, man. Do you actually sing? Yeah. Um, thing about me and sing is no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing. No, I sing like a dog howling. If people, I sing in the car. And people to the sides of me look at me like I'm a stark, more of a stark raving lunatic than I actually am. And so, no, I don't sing. I think everybody should sing, regardless sing of how they sing, and, and just have fun. I saw a bumper sticker that says, if you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. I sing at church every night by reading along to the song, and that's about it. Other, way, other than that, like, when I play rock band, I sing to all the rock band songs. I mean, I sing along to all the music that I listen to, but I can't sing. <laughs> Doesn't mean I don't sing. just means I can't sing. Well, I, I, I sing. I've got this little music project that I do on Fridays. I have the, my, my partner over. We have this little band we call The Rupture. It's just, two, it's just the two of us, and we don't perform. Uh, we just write and record songs and... And, and, and do stuff like that. And the greatest thing I ever got was that auto tune plug in. <laughs> so you can take a, a performance that's terrible and you can fix it. I heard the one song you posted at the website was pretty good. I liked it. It was kind of, it kind of reminded me of a band we have here called um, The Arrogant Worms. I think it is. I like the name. Nice and quirky. Are they on MySpace? I don't know. They're pretty famous. Band, so you should be able to Google them on YouTube or whatever. Is the singer as good looking as me? <laughs> <laughs> the singer actually um, uh, was hired by Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and now he hosts a talk show on television. Oh wow, the arrogant worms! So look that mm -hmm. up, folks. The arrogant worms. Yep. Yeah, I was thinking about posting some of our videos. We actually make these elaborate music videos. Uh, you know. Anyway, they're on the YouTube. Uh, I'm not going to give you the link here because I'm kind of shy about it. <laughs> what is this light coming on my forehead? Oh, I've got the daylight showing here. Oh, <laughs> oh, my eyes. Yeah, I'm trying to light up this green screen here. Uh, when uh, when people are watching this, they're going to probably be seeing Call of Duty backgrounds behind me or fields of green or something like that here. <laughs> And I see Flex has got a green T-shirt on, so you can probably do him up too. Oh yeah, I can. I can give you some crazy, some crazy stuff. There they are, right on there on my space. There you get worms. I'm mm -hmm. a cow. All right. They're a big hit. Yeah, they're pretty it's good. Big, What's I am? They're uh, forty-two thousand plays. Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty successful. So, are you a mm -hmm. Rush fan? Mm -hmm. My husband went to school with the drummer. Oh really? Yep. Wow. Yeah, Rush is pretty big in Canada. Well, I remember listening. My first, my first, like, yeah, heavy duty rock band album. I was Rush twenty one twelve when I was in high school. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So you're you're <laughs> the same age as me, right? I, I was born in fifty nine, so uh, you're probably 
I'm 53. Yeah, so I think I'm a little older. Than, I'm definitely. I'm way. I'm way the heck older than than Mo for sure. You're two years older. Than I could I am. be your. I could be your father. I'm so older. You're so young. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is quite a contrast. Our last guest was 16. Mm-hmm. I, I'm thinking. You know, I actually could easily conceivably be his grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of neat. I was watching that and was just thinking, oh my. You know, it's it's really neat to see the um, the young people and the the passions that they have and their ideas about things and how passionate about they are about their ideas and and uh, no, it's great. And then you know, it makes you feel old. But then on the other hand, you you see it makes you uh, understand. For me, you know, some of the things that you go through in life that change your perspectives on things and why things that maybe you're passionate before, maybe not so much, or yeah, it's kind of interesting what time does to you. Yeah. But it's it's really great seeing uh, the young people joining the clan and participating. Oh yeah, well, some people are annoyed by some of those young ones, but I I, I kind of like those fourteen and sixteen year olds. They're they're sort of fun. Yeah. They're enthusiastic and they bring yes. a lot of life to the game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then of course we got the the older crowd like you know uh, Rye, Billy, and uh, and Junior. Mm-hmm. You know they're mm-hmm. in their 60s and they're, they're yeah. playing Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah. So so I play every I play every day with Junior and Willie. Yeah, they're crazy. They're maniacs. They're they're like <laughs> they're they're first person shooting fiends. They're fiends. Yeah, we play every day. Damn. That's cool. I wish I I was off during the day. I would play with you guys too. <laughs> so so Mo, mm-hmm. what's the deal? You play Call of Duty. You're a, you're a, you know, you're a, a mature, classy lady living in Canada and the Yukon. What's the deal? Why do you play Call of Duty? My son. What's, what's that's what started you? Your son started you playing Call of Duty, huh? I played. I started playing it um, with my son. He he was living um, across the town from us. And uh, he talked me into getting a PlayStation. I'm going to see if I can find a picture of him here. He talked me into getting a PlayStation and uh, so that I could play Call of Duty with him. So he lived. He was living about, I don't know, half an hour from me. Whitehorse is small in population but large in area. Uh-huh. And, um, and so we would play Call of Duty together, the Black Ops game. I don't think I've got a picture of him on here. Um, and have our mics on and talk to each other we just visit all the time and then he uh so that's why i was playing call of duty no but but you uh, dug not, running around and shooting people too though well the thing is is when i was playing I was playing the black ops game and i hardly ever played in the public matches i'd always just go into like the combat thing or whatever and just run around being silly with knives and and whoever was silly enough to join in you know just run around and I'd set up those, you know, those funny little custom games. Oh yeah, your custom games are, yeah. are, are famous far and wide. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> they make a lot of people a little bit sick because of the movement's so fast and everything. But yeah, and so, and then that's I'm trying to remember it some, was somewhere along in there that I met up with um, a few other people that were having, you know, difficulty playing regular games because of the youth in there. Quick reflexes and damn quick I, I, reflexes. <laughs> so we started playing together all the time, and that morphed into that original clan. And uh, Shiz and Major Lee and I were like clan leaders there. And uh, the guy who owned the website turned into be, uh, you know, an unpleasant fellow, shall we say? So I just so so I. <laughs> Because the only reason I play isn't because I'm, you know, all crazy about getting badges or points or whatever. I just play for fun. And if it's not fun, I don't play. There you go. There you go. So it's, I just play for fun. And, uh, you know, my son, when all that stuff was going on at that uh, original clan, all the drama and everything that was going on, he, he just, and I was looking at it, I was kind of like a little bit upset because... These are all people that I enjoyed playing with, but you know the one guy was just making things. I was really there. Awful. I was there. I I joined that group, you know, just about three weeks after you guys started it, and I saw yeah. th- I saw that happen. Yeah. It, it was really awful. And so my son just came up to me and says, "Mom, those are imaginary people." 
don't get upset about imaginary people. <laughs> You're right. You know, you know, like the I don't want to say his name. It's kind of like Lord, Lord Voldemort. You don't want to say the name. But anyways, uh, so I just stepped away from it for a while, and then when the the new clan started up, um, majorly uh, was on my Facebook friend list, and she told me, "Come on over," you know. Hey, it's so then all I just now. yeah, yeah. And so now I'm back playing again, and like I say, I I play and have fun, and if it's if it's ever not fun, I'm you know I would do something else. But isn't it not fun to shoot people? Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. it's fun, but you know, I have as much fun if with my player gets killed, you know, a hundred times as much as I do is killing people. It just doesn't matter to me. Like I, that, not that I'm trying to have our team lose or anything. I, I play to win, but it doesn't bother me if we don't because I'm just having fun. That's it. That's it. That's my all. Favorite. It my favorite's getting squashed by a care package. That yeah, that's is happy. pretty hilarious. Yeah, it just tells me don't stand in the red smoke, and I always forget. Yeah. Well, that drop zone is like, okay, that yeah. happens all the time now in drop zone. You get killed by care packages. But back in Black Ops, uh, that was pretty rare. One time, one time yeah. on grid, I saw a guy calling his care package, and I snuck around behind him, and mm -hmm. I was just about to shoot him, in the back, and boom, a care package killed me. <laughs> it's like, I, I can't believe that just happened. I can't believe that just happened. I didn't know that could happen. I got footage of the same thing happened in the shiz. He was getting ready to throw a grenade at somebody, and one landed on him. I was just about to shoot that guy right in the back and steal his care package. <laughs> and that's what makes us sub one, right? It, my my biggest fail would have been playing... Oh, I can't remember the name of the map. It's um, a winter map on Black Ops. And it's got two silos that's got a little camping spot between them at one point. And I can't remember what it's called. But anyways, oh, WMB, um, maybe. Yeah. I, I, I uh, had one of the little RX cars, which I'm terrible at driving. I always end up going up something and getting stuck and going back and forth. But anyways, I was hiding behind a building. I let the car go, and I was watching it drive around, and I was driving around the building, and I came up behind someone. I thought, oh, good. So I'm, I can never remember which button to hit to make it explode. So I was hitting all the buttons really fast on the controller, and then it blew up, and it killed me because I ran up behind myself. And killed myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good I am. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, 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 you're pretty decent. Hey, I, I, it's like I want to stay away from you when you pull out those knives. <laughs> So are you excited about Black Ops 2? Yep. I am. I'm excited about um, the way they have it set up to get more points for playing the objective. That'll be fun. And, uh, yeah, the way they're talking about setting up the classes looks really interesting. And you don't have to... It looks like you don't have to grind it out to get a pro. Yeah, there's no pro perks. That. There's no pro perks. It's just a perk. So uh, I kind of like that because there's lots of perks that I'll, I've never gotten, I'll never get, just because I'm just not good enough. Well, so then I enjoy the the game the same as everyone else. Some people enjoy the the getting the badges, like you were talking about, getting the badges and get, unlocking yes. achievements and stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I don't I don't like that part. I don't like the achievement so part. So I, I never even prestige DM juice. <laughs> You don't like an achievement. On Black Ops. It's like Yeah, so I, I did up to prestige level five in Black Ops and I haven't prestige since just because I know it's gonna be a pain in the butt getting all the pro perks that make me good enough to at least maintain a point five oh well, you gotta get your sleight of hand pro <laughs> and you gotta get your ghost pro, you know, and until you yeah. do you just can't compete at all. Yeah, the footage looks great. I was just this morning before the show, I was watching the official Call of Duty YouTube channel, and they have like this awesome video where they're showing live gameplay, and uh, and they're sort of breaking it down and stuff. It's just, uh, it looks great. It looks like it's going to mm -hmm. be epic. It's yeah. coming out of Gamescom. I hope they have the combat thing too, because that's fun. Yeah, I heard that they had combat training is coming back, because I love combat training. Mm -hmm. I still like to go on it and just you know see see how many of those little bastards I can shoot. <laughs> you have fun going on the combat training with Jack Decker. Oh my God, he would just start laughing and laughing and laughing, and he's so his laughter is so infectious. <laughs> and 
running around killing robots together. It was fun. I haven't got to play too much with Jack. Uh, he, he, I guess, is he one of those guys who went over to Battlefield? Yeah. Ah. But he's been playing that. He hasn't been playing that either. But he's on my Facebook list. I should give him a shout and see if he's going to join us for the new game. Yeah. So I, I got, like, Flex, what do you think about the Modern Warfare 3? What do I think about Modern Warfare 3? Yeah. I kind of liked it at first, but I don't care for it as much now. It seems so repetitive. All the maps seem to be, even though they come out with, they've been coming out with new maps, they seem repetitive. And then they came out with Terminal, which I thought was kind of cheesy. Uh, I just, I don't know. I'm bored with it. Yeah. But then, or I'm bored with Battlefield 3 too. I'm uh, the first person shooter with what's going on with them right now. I'm kind of bored with. I'm ready for Black Ops 2. I'm ready for uh, that new, uh, what's that new Medal of Honor title Warfighter? that's coming out? Warfighter. I'm ready for I'll that. I'll get that. You know? I'll get that. I'll give I'm it a gonna, try. I'm gonna get that. But it only yeah, well, comes out like two weeks before with Black Ops 2, though, so probably I'll get it and dig around with it. And then... Well, it's, it's got the same engine that they used in Battlefield 3, so <laughs> it's the same injury. Right. right. So, so uh, Mo, what do you think about Modern Warfare 3? It's all right. I like the Black Ops better. But, um, when I play the games, I like you know whatever the game is. But I make up my. I know it sounds retarded, but in my mind, I make up games within the games. And sometimes I'll shout it out on the mic. But if there's funny little places on the maps or one thing or another, I always make my own silly challenges and things. So if there's you know like on the terminal, I'm going to board that plane and take it to Cuba. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> playing stewardess while I'm shooting people or whatever and I just I make up games within games it's the same as like with Black Ops you know the hotel map games would be everybody get in the hot tubs you can only kill within the, from the hot tubs only oh that's a cool one we gotta try that or or never, you know just how many people can game. you get into one of those elevators I never tried that I don't know but that might be fun. It might be fun to play that uh, Virgins game with in the elevators where we all run in and throw the Semtex down and blow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, no, I have fun with Modern Warfare 3. I'm not bored of it. Probably I don't play as much as everybody else does. Maybe I would if I did. But I just uh, make up games, like I say, keep it interesting. And sometimes, I don't, I, sometimes it's just something that's going on in my own warped little head that I'm making up my own challenges to complete within the maps myself and maybe that's why I die all the time but there you go. have fun. Please keep your seat in the upright <laughs> position while I shoot you. <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. So the new maps are kind of fun but um, I'm having a hard time with um, decommissioned and the oil rig one because there's so many levels so everyone's shooting you from everywhere I can I I just spawn and get shot so i have to i'm still trying to figure out where i'm supposed to be looking i know i can't the figure those maps out it's like where where yeah. are, where am i getting shot from where do i have to look out for how do yeah. you play core or hardcore uh both you play both mm -hmm. yeah do you play core or hardcore i play core i prefer core <laughs> if if my hard. friends are all playing hardcore and I, and I feel like I want to play. I'll get on and I'll play hardcore. It's not like I'm. It's not like I won't play hardcore. I'll play it. I like core better. A lot of people See, enjoy so like the, the fact that it's I easy like to both, kill people. I like both. I like both. We were playing bare bones like, the other day, where there's no perks. I like, the, I like the community games. I like I like that drop zone. That's fun. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Oh, how about Have that all or nothing that uh, that game? Oh, oh yeah, where, where you stab people to get bullets. Have you tried that yet? No, I don't think I have. Oh, got to be right up your alley. <laughs> you start. Everybody starts off. You have a pistol that's unloaded. There's no ammo in it. Oh, okay. And you have you have hardline and you have scavenger. So the very first person you kill, you unlock scavenger, which means now you can grab bullets for your pistols. Yeah. Well, that's still all you have is a pistol and throwing knives and knives. So most of the kills I get are running around with knives. And everybody's just running around with knives. 
well, it's way easier if you're running around with knives because you don't have to aim. You just have to run around and hit people. Yeah, yeah. I think I think <laughs> you should try that. You're, 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 boy, oh boy, that's that game was made for you. <laughs> well, you saw my picture. I posted a picture of the website with my knives. Ah, so <laughs> you got the knife. Yeah. <laughs> Is that your grouse knife? <laughs> yeah, this is my Henkel and my Cutco knife. Yeah, I was half in the bag that night too. I'd, we just got back from going out for dinner and drank a few bottles of wine. And Polly, come and take a picture of me with my knives. <laughs> so he thinks he thinks I'm crazy, anyways. But he puts up with me. So yeah, he took out the camera and snapped a few. Well, those are great shots. I saw those on Facebook before you posted them. So, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm kind of scared of Facebook. It's like I don't I don't know. It's like they everybody in the universe can track you down like a dog. You have Every, to watch your privacy settings. You got to watch your privacy settings. And the fact is, everybody can hunt you down like a dog anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All they can do is pay thirty nine dollars, and they can find out whatever they want out about, about you. You don't need Facebook for that, though, because with everything oh. that we have that's electronically, like between our taxes being filed and banking and everything, if somebody really wanted to find out about you, they could find out everything now anyways. Yeah. And I was, my son is a big conspiracy theorist, and he's telling me about programs and things that they're doing in um, um, around the world and the States is doing where they're monitoring everything that goes on, and it's like, holy crap. You know, it's scary. Yes. The whole big thing. So what do you think? Uh, are they out to get us, man? Oh, yeah, the, for sure uh, they're doing that. For sure they're doing that. Def, uh, I'm one paranoid mofo. Everybody's out to get me. Everybody. <laughs> this light on my forehead is weird. Yeah, it looks like a band-aid. It, like it looks like I'm shiny. It looks like a headband almost, like a real groovy headband. <laughs> I should try, I should get a groovy headband. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, uh, I got the, I got the, like this uh, this hair situation here. People think I'm short haired when they see me, but I'm actually kind of a rocker. <laughs> Flex, your beard is getting pretty prodigious. Check this out. Yeah, that's getting that's getting yeah, kind of impressive. Looks like Z topish. Getting ZZ topish, yeah. Fortunately, my hair getting all gray, and so that's why I, I wear hats. And I figure if I wear hats long enough, then it'll wear my hair off, so I'll be bald. So then you won't be able to see the gray hair. Yeah, well, you wear your hair really, really short. Oh wow, for you that's really long. For you, that's like time for a haircut, big time. Looks like you've got thick hair. My hair is actually too long right now. My wife usually gives me a sheer job with the clippers. I, I don't go to a barber. I, my wife does. Is that because you're a cheap bastard? Hey, Polly? I, yeah, basically. <laughs> I don't get mine cut because I'm a cheap okay. bastard. There you go. We're all cheap bastards. Are we? My husband's going to come in and say hi. We're going to meet him. All right. All right. There he is. Hi there. Hi. 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 Glad to meet you. Got the hat on. Apparently, you guys were all supposed to wear hats. We're all well, we're all into hats. He so, was uh, wearing a poke hat earlier. What? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. oh, what the hell? What the hell? All done in my hat. So, so you're a musician. <laughs> That's pretty damn cool. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, do some flex. Awesome. And they play on the Xbox and well, and plays on PS3 too. I got a, my hats from a radio station. I told these jokers I'd. Put them put on here, so. <laughs> so so Paul, are we gonna have to pay you royalties now that you you've appeared? No, no, no. Scale? Oh, we're gonna give union <laughs> scale. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the guys when I'm playing on the with the headphones and the, the sounds off on the TV, so all the sounds just on the headphones and you hear me yelling yep. things in the yep. living room. These yep. are the people yep. <laughs> that I've talked to. So how do you how do you feel about uh, your, your wife is a is a video game person? Oh, she's a freak for it. A maniac. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind at all. <laughs> 
So I get to I get to play on my computer too. Well, do you play video games on consoles or just computer? No, just, just on computer. a computer. So what's your favorite yeah. game? Uh, I like the uh, Civilization games. Mm. Oh, Sid. Uh, Sim City. Sid Meier. Yeah. Yeah. Sid Meier. Yeah. See, that's a very yeah. that's a very uh, cerebral kind of a game. That's not like just reflexes and stuff. That's the kind of guy it's he is, a, though. It's it's uh, sometimes it can be pretty tough. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm playing one right now. It's kind of tough. So your civilization, how how advanced are they? Um. How do you mean? Oh, you're, he's playing. He's playing the city one right now. Right so. now, I'm playing Sim City. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So, uh, uh, do you have a whole whole new respect for mayors and governors and stuff now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yeah. That's a difficult game. It's pretty good. Yeah. When he's not mad, he's playing music up there. Oh yeah. Well, shoot. Yeah. Always homework. Shoot, you got to give us a link to a, to a, you know uh, an MP3 or, or something like that so we can uh, we can get a, a little taste of it. Can we send him an MP3 of um, the thing you did that jazz thing? Jazz in the hall. Yeah. You don't see why not. I'll send you something. I don't know how to put it on the internet or whatever. I'll send you something and you can put it on. Cool. You know how you this Skype is awesome. You can send people files. You just go to any any link and you just copy link and then you go into that little chat thingy. And click it. But I don't know how to. So I'd, I'd have to send the, yeah the file off my computer to you. Oh, okay. Just, it, I don't know how to put it online for people to hear. Oh, okay. You should get a YouTube page. There okay, you I go. have to learn how to do that. I'll YouTube. figure it out. I'll figure it out you know and then I'll put do. something on there. You know what you could do quite easily is just get an email address and s send it that way. Yeah, it's pretty big files to send over the. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to send big files. Flex and I I'll, use this thing called Dropbox. We, oh, yeah, Dropbox. Yeah, we can do Dropbox. Airy and worms. I got to listen to that. Factory hey, Flex, do you, do you so, remember our password and username and all that for our Dropbox? Mine's are auto saved by the computer. It's like I never can remember <laughs> that thing. <laughs> oh, no. Really? I, I probably wrote it down. See, one of us. I'll, I'll figure out a way to to post it on a YouTube channel. I've never made one of those. I've never looked into it, but I'll figure it out and I'll post a couple of um, MP3 files on there, and and then you'll be able to hear. You can Facebook it too. Put it on Facebook. Yeah, I suppose yeah. we could do that. But then yeah, there you go. Yeah. So when you, you uh, when you get on YouTube, first thing you gotta subscribe to Bulletproof Underwear. Okay. <laughs> This is what this is, is Bulletproof Underwear Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, so this is our opportunity. So, the, you know, a little bumper on the show. So, you're watching Bulletproof episode, Bulletproof Underwear episode number eight with our special guests, Mad Mo Yukon, alias Toby Pace, and Paul, her sweetie. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, our bon you're our free bonus guest. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, do you play a... Do you play oh. a, a Electric bass only, or do you have like one of those big old-fashioned kinds? I don't have a stand-up, but I do have an acoustic. You used to play stand-up, though. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole new ball game. Those things. Well, you can't exactly carry it on the bus. No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw somebody do that Hold one up. time. I saw somebody I carrying I... one on a bus. Yeah, yeah. It had wheels. I've... It had wheels. It's like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Maybe it was a cello. I think a, a a bass. The case would just be bigger than a person. It, it would be. Yeah, taller. My wife and I go to concerts all the time. It's like, uh, I don't know. We just we enjoy seeing the acts live, and uh, we used to stray away from general admission, you know, because there's all the hassles of getting in too close with people and people start slamming around, and depending on the band and stuff, you know. Yeah, no. But we went to a general admission concert a couple weeks ago. It was Theory of a Dead Man, and uh, well, it was a pretty good show. They put on a good show, and they had a couple of really good uh, uh, opening acts. And the one band, the brother that usually did the singing was sick, so the other brother in the band did the singing. And it's like I went out to MySpace afterwards and listened to the band, and you couldn't tell the difference. It was incredible. Uh, that band, I saw the video that you put up of that. They kind of just a little bit reminded me of the Grateful Dead. Oh yeah. Yeah. Were, were you guys Deadheads back in the day? 
N- not me particularly. Not me. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm a Beatle freak. I, yeah, yeah. Or would say, I'd lean more to the Beatles, I'd say, than Grateful Dead. <laughs> oh, you're wearing a Beatles shirt now. I got All it. right. The time I go to, go to the um, music stores in the cities and I hunt down Beatles t shirts for him and I bring him back a suitcase full whenever I can. I love the Beatles. So. I love the Beatles. You know what? My, si- I, I, my sister is a little older than me. She's six years older than me. So when they came out, she was the exact perfect age. She was like 12 to be a Beatle, you know. Ah! Yeah, yeah, that would be perfect. You know, she had all these, all these 45s and uh, and all these magazines, you know, with uh, Beatles stuff, you know. It's like, yeah. win a date with Paul or, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know if she still has those, but she used to have a, a big collection, like, buttons. Oh, wow. You know, I, oh, yeah. Shirts and stuff and everything, all that stuff's worth money, you know. That's right. And like most girls, you know, she was uh, she was in love with Paul. Oh, well, yeah. Me too. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what he gets for Christmas every year for <coughs> Christmas. He gets Beatles stuff. I'm always trying to find throughout the year Beatles things to buy him for Christmas. Yeah, so, I think I've got all the books out. Yeah, all the books, and uh, yeah. I bought him the um, that box set of all. I can't remember what it's called. That fancy box set with all the new mastered CDs. Yeah, yeah, this, the reissues. The reissues, and the re- uh, uh, yeah. Anytime there's a new anything, I'm out there buying it for yeah. him. And then he gets that at Christmas. It's always a very merry Beatles Christmas. I'll bet it is. So, so what is your opinion of Yoko Ono? Um, as far as the, the Beatle breakup goes? Yeah, just your general impression of, like, what do you think about Yoko? She, she didn't break up the Beatles. She's an artist. What can I say? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of Beatle fans love to love to blame her and hate on her. And of course, John had lots of problems. Yeah, he had lots of personal problems, and Yoko wasn't the cause of them. So. According, according to the books I've read on uh, on the Beatles, she had nothing to do with with. She had as much to do with the breakup as Linda McCartney did. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I no. don't. Yeah. I haven't read. I haven't really read very many books at all on the Beatles, and I just think that. That they were, for a time, they were such a dynamic, and then all of a sudden they just all want seemed like a like a star bursting. Like they all wanted, they had all this creative juice, and they all wanted to go their separate way and be their own their own entity. Yeah. And that dynamic went away, and it was like when that happened, it was time for them to move on. Well, it changed the world, man. It changed the world. That was like that was they changed like, too. They changed all kinds of things. Everything became different after they, after they hit the scene. Right, the world was just was just different. You know, before the Beatles, it was one thing, and now it's another thing. Yep. So, uh, I couldn't let them out. Well, I saw I saw something they were talking about uh, the original drummer Pete Best. You, you know that guy's got to be pissed. <laughs> 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 this close. Yeah. He was this close. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, were, were you like okay? So you're a professional musician. Uh, so, are you in a band right now? Or? I'm in. I'm in a few. You're in a few bands. Yeah. So what yeah. was what I'm, was the the first uh, band that you were in, and did you have like high hopes of of like stardom like the Beatles or the? Oh yeah. Yeah, it was the uh, you know that's the only reason why I got into music was because of the Beatles. Sometimes I curse them, sometimes I don't. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm thankful, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, so yeah. your first band, you weren't professional, right? You were just uh, just playing with some. No, I was. Yeah, I was about 16 years old, and we were playing house parties and stuff like that. Eh? But uh, my some first of the best bands. That's... Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I think my first pro band was. Uh, um, I was living in Vancouver, and uh, we signed a contract and put an album on all kinds of stuff. Oh wow, like official! Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. But don't you love those days back when you were just like a, a dumb kid, you know, uh, yep. playing with your pals? We love yep. those those party bands. When I was a kid, and we used to go to heart. Oh man, some of the best bands, and some of my friends that now have 
you know they they become somewhat successful and semi-successful here in the in the Minnesota Twin Cities market. Um, I go, I still go and see them, you know, and I, it's like I remember those. I have those memories of of uh, those house parties, you know, and it's like when they weren't so good and they knew like two. It's like we only know three songs, but man, we're gonna play the shit. No three out. chords <laughs> and two songs. <laughs> Yeah. We have a we have a little club. I live in uh, just just outside a little suburb called Piedmont, but uh, live just outside of Oakland, and uh, we have this little club, this little hole in the wall that's been around forever, called the Stork Club, and you can go there six nights a week. Uh, I think they have karaoke or something on one night, but you can go there six nights a week, and they usually have like three or four bands booked, and none of them are ever famous. I mean, these are always. I mean, if you get like. Two or three guys together, and you go up to them and say, "Yeah, we, we're a band. We'd like to to get in your club." They'll they'll book you. <laughs> awesome, that's great. So you got a love place that supports live music. So you go to you go to the store club, you know, and you pay your little five dollar cover, and you will definitely see, uh, you'll definitely see like three or four <laughs> bands. Now there for sure will be at least one band that just is, just. Ah, terrible, awful, awful. But you usually see right. one or two bands that are very good. It's like, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. It's good to see that there's still some live music out there. There's not a whole lot, eh? There's, with the the whole um, DJ thing and stuff, it's really oh, shut down yeah. a, lot, a, lot, a lot of live music, which is unfortunate. Like, DJ is fine and everything, too, but when, I, when, when, when you and I were first... Uh, married you could play house gigs where you'd have a where the bands would have a gig for like you know three or four months in yeah. a place playing so many nights a week and you could make a living off of it yep. but then it kind of disappeared <clears throat> eh? it, just, it just turned into another friday night saturday night town you know yeah. you, we used to play five nights a week in this town but it's just it's just turned into a two-nighter wow yeah that's, yeah. Okay. yeah that's basically all over the place too yeah, we noticed that when we went to Ontario that time, was uh, trying to find a, a venue to listen to live music was really hard to yep. find anything. Yep. Yeah. But you know, uh, the the modern technology is pretty cool because now anybody with a computer can like record their own. Mm -hmm. their, they can make their own album. They can make their own songs. Yeah. They can. They don't. You don't need sure. to go to a recording studio and, and pay five hundred bucks an hour. You can do it on your well, Macintosh. I'm always yep. getting fun, made fun of that uh, we must only listen to Justin Bieber in Canada because I think he must be big in the States and being Canadian, so they think that's all we listen to. Well, Is he Canadian? <laughs> I didn't even know. Yeah, but he came, he became big from playing songs as a kid on YouTube. Yeah. And that's developed his following and became a big star. And that's Usher picked him up and that's then he started touring. That's, you know, so yeah, you can do it from, from, home. That, from home. Even that is like one thing, but like I I just installed uh, a, pro a program called Bandify, which I can tell up my air my zip code, and it tells me it goes through my MP3 list, tells me all the bands on my MP3 list that are playing and when, and then uh, makes suggestions of bands that are similar to the ones that I listen to, and it's like we in the Twin Cities are fortunate we still have a lot of live music. That's and it's good. It's really cool, and we live like uh, what twelve blocks from the train. So it's like we drive to the train and ride the train downtown and check it out. It's great. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're just across the bay from San Francisco, and there's plenty of clubs, plenty of live music over there. The Fillmore, the famous Fillmore, the Warfield. <laughs> Have you ever been to San Francisco? Uh, I just drove through one time on my way down to L.A. with a friend of mine. Stopped in Mill Valley for for a lunch, and that's about, that was about it. Want <laughs> you some time for a vacation? <laughs> Just drive through, drink wine. Yeah. Lots of <laughs> oh wine. yeah, 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 yeah. You guys could go to the Napa <laughs> Valley and uh, like. Yeah, country, yeah. Do do all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. If you ever come to San Francisco, I'll uh, I'll show you something. I don't know what I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> bridge, a big bridge. <laughs> Alcatraz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll show you some some sourdough bread. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll show you crabs. Show you some real music. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure yeah. if I want to see the crabs. <laughs> oh, you're not a crab fan? 
Oh, I got it. I see what you did there. You got to watch with her. Last time I offered to show somebody my crabs. Uh. <laughs> we got the Alaska king crabs up here. Those yeah. are big crabs. They're big crabs. I like those. Yeah, they're great. very tasty. You got a you got a red lobster. Well, I'm gonna excuse myself and uh, go start uh, uh, back to building my city. And it was nice meeting you guys. Well, it's good to meet you. Great. Thanks a lot, Paul, for being on Bulletproof Underwear. Yeah. Okay, oh, hey, I'm going to use you for a promo. Cut, put your face right up next to the camera like this and say, you're watching Bulletproof Underwear. You're watching Bulletproof Underwear. Ah, that's the promo. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. see you guys. Thanks All right. a lot. Help you want so Oh, my legs. Oh, All right. Stiff. I'm stiff and creaky. <sighs> <gasps> yeah, that's my lovey. The heart of my heart. This is where Flex has to flex his sore arm. Okay, this is the time of the show where everybody has to show their guns. Okay. Oh, yeah. Walk like an Egyptian. How oh, beauty my guns are. Yeah. <laughs> this green screen oh. has got me closed in here. I can't get very far back. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're... I've uh, blowing out both my shoulders, so no. I got a match set. Mm. Yeah, I should send you um, a link. I see, see if I can still find it. And it's got lots of um, I really, e really easy exercises that will do great things for your shoulders. Do that. If you find them, send them my way. Right. Yeah, I'll see if I can find them. PM me it or send it on Facebook or whatever. It don't matter. Just so I can get it. Yeah. So, are we gonna get to see your down dog? My my, sorry, my your what? Your down dog. My down dog. <laughs> are, you talk, are you talking yoga or my my dog? dog? <laughs> yoga, baby, yoga. <laughs> <laughs> my yoga poses are extraordinarily awkward and attractive. I am a tall, gangly goofy looking thing and it's just not a pretty sight <laughs> <laughs> well I doubt that I doubt that <laughs> I'll see if I can find my dog dogs though they're, I think they're so outside right now when they come back in the house I'll pull them up here on the couch with me okay so are, are these Toby and Pace or are these different dogs <laughs> oh Toby and Pace are long gone now these are just my, I've got a little chihuahua on a lasso you got a chihuahua yeah oh my god yeah. peaches the dogs peaches give me your peaches yeah, they can meet each other Pitches. online here. <laughs> Come here. That's coincidentally my first hunting dog. His name was Toby. Toby, He's a, yeah. I have he was a, a Springer Spaniel. He was oh, a Springer so Spaniel. Come here, you. I got another Springer Spaniel right now. That's why I broke my how I broke my collarbone six weeks ago when he tried to attack a pit bull. Oh jeez. Oh, look at oh, you. Oh look at that. That's peaches. That's peaches. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna go get my dog. Hold on. Peaches. Oh, peaches. She's kind of, she's kind of scared. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Trying to figure out. No, no, I took the hat off. She's not afraid of the hat. She's little, so I put her up here. For a chihuahua, she's kind of big, though. But for a dog, she's small. Come on, come on, show yourself. We're here. I couldn't bring, I'd bring my dog in, but he'd wreck the place. I've seen your dog. He's a pretty good-sized fella. Killer yeah. dog. Here comes the killer dogs. <laughs> oh my there. goodness! You got a fistful, <laughs> fistful of doggies. Oh, oh yeah. so it's just like my mom and dad's did. Oh, yeah. look at how cute that hairdo is. Yeah, he that's kinda too looks cool. Like <laughs> oh, so what are these guys' names? Here. This is Buddy. And this is Chica. Chica. Oh, Chica, you're so cute. Peaches. Yeah. Peaches, you got a friend. You got a friend, fellow They're Chihuahua. Oh. This is so cheesy, but that's okay. Yeah. Hey, you know, this is my we're gonna we're gonna put we're gonna put doggies in the in the description here, and we'll get twice as many views. People love doggies. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've met my, almost my whole family. I'd let you sh I'd let you meet David, except he's um, out of town now. He just went to a big, huge uh, music festival in BC called Shambhala. It's a famous um, music festival for electronic music, oh. dubstep, that sort of thing. He'll be back from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Come here. Come here. Um, oh, come here. No, okay. out of the food. Get out of the food. Is it mnemonic? Come here. Oh, we're going to meet the dogs here. We, we got to meet come all here. the dogs. We can't just, uh... Oh, my God. Oh, look at that 
beautiful thing. Oh my god. He's big. Yeah. Who are you? You gonna put him in your lap? Yeah, I'll put him in my lap. Oh my god, this will be good. <laughs> You're ready to call 911. Oh. Oh, look this at that face. Baby. Oh, this, what a good oh. dog. This is Brownie. Oh. He's Spaniel. Look at that. Look at that face. Oh, Spaniels have faces ever. Those eyes. Yeah. That would be a good velvet painting. Is that a girl or a boy dog? He's a boy dog with uh, no equipment. Oh, okay. You should at least get him those little silicone implants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nudicles. They're called nudicles. Nudicles, huh? <laughs> the beautiful dog. All right, no, no, out of the food. Out, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> no, now our dog has uh, has low uh, thyroid, so uh, she's on these thyroid pills that we give her every day, and uh, okay. they have these things called pill pockets. It's this little treat. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those. It has a little opening in the in the in the top of it, so you just stick the pill in the pill pocket and you pinch it. And uh, every day I give her one in the morning, one in the evening, and I shake the bottle with the pills and wherever mm -hmm. she is she'll absolutely come running like crazy yeah and uh, then she's like all excited because she's gonna get a pill pocket cool it's the, it's the high point of the whole day those two pill pockets <laughs> it's crazy I, I can't he, he lives in the garage he doesn't live in the house because I mean like we he he's let out several times a day and he's let in the house but he can't live in the house because he's so destructive that um, he'd like eat the couch and <laughs> I mean like I, I had a plate of nachos that were sitting on uh, the table over across the way here mm -hmm. and he was already getting ready to have himself some when I let him in because <laughs> he, he's got a he nose on him for... he's got a nose on him it doesn't quit does he eat the jalapenos he'll eat jalapenos Wow! See, that's not our dogs. Post dogs, they sleep with us. And, yeah, our dog sleeps with us. Yeah, and if we're on the couch watching TV, there's always one of them sprawled out on our laps or our chests if we're lying down. Oh yeah. Well, it makes a good doorbell too. I mean, uh, a yeah, advanced doorbell. If anyone's walking anywhere near our house, Peaches is barking, mm -hmm. so we know somebody's coming up. Yeah, that was so noisy. Hang on, my wife is calling. What's the what other dog's name? Oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The the other Chihuahua's name is Chica. She's a cute little rascal, definitely. She's kind of a uh, black and uh, other colors. Black, black and tan and white. She's a tricolor. Yeah, black and tan and white. Ours is like the Taco Bell color. What yeah. do you call that? Fawn. Fawn. Oh, there you go. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Taco oh, Bell. do you guys uh, have a lot of junk food uh, there where you're at? In Whitehorse, we have um, we just a Kentucky Fried Chicken just opened a couple of weeks ago, so that was new. Big lineups. And we have McDonald's and Pizza Hut, and we've See, got a couple of Tim Hortons and a couple of Starbucks. What's a Tim Hortons? Oh, oh, you guys don't get Tim Hortons, you poor things. No, I don't know what that is. Tim Hortons is a famous, famous, famous Canadian coffee shop. Oh. And hi. This is my daughter, Paige. Hi, Paige. Hi, Paige. Nice That's to meet old. you. That's Yam. She already knows Yam. Is that a chainsaw lollipop? No, that's not a chainsaw lollipop. <laughs> She's busy torturing her cat. <laughs> Anyways, Tim Hortons is a famous... Tim Horton was a hockey player, and of course, oh, kind of a hockey Oh, yeah, 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 okay. So, Tim Hortons is a coffee shop uh, where you get really good coffee and donuts. I guess How? the closest in the States would be like Krispy Kremes, but um, it's a you get uh, donuts there and um, all sorts of donuts and soup and sandwiches. Oh. But everybody, everybody stops at Tim Hortons to get a coffee on the way to work, like Tim Hortons. So do you have Starbucks up there? Yeah. It's not as a popular but as nobody, Tim Hortons. Nobody though. bothers with Starbucks. Star Starbucks is all right, but uh, Tim Hortons is where it's at. Well, see, I, I'd see? be there. I'd be there <laughs> if I was around. I would go. No, I yeah. would. I couldn't, cause see, I, I'll tell you the, the truth. Tim Hortons and Kandahar for our for our troops. 
All right. Hey, let's see that bracelet. Show us that that thing. Oh, it's a, what is that? Just a, it's a leather bracelet with cool. um little um sparkles Spiky on it. Spiky thingies. Kind of a cuff, cuff bracelet. Yeah, you look like Lucy Lawless. You should get one on the other side, and you'd be like Xena. I'm trying to use it on the other side. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, hey, how about uh, like uh, like I always sort of dug ass kicking chicks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like uh, Xena Warrior Princess kind of thing. You know, it's like that's a cheesy show, but uh, you gotta love a kick ass. Yep. Well, what was that show on Fox with, uh, oh, it had uh, the brunette in it with, oh, she, and she just kicked the crap out of people. I can't remember the name of it. What was it called? Dark Angel with, uh, one with Jessica Elba in it. It had Jessica oh, Elba. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that, and I can't remember the name of it, but I remember that show. I think yeah. it was Dark Angel. Man, she just wailed the crap out of people on that show. I remember that. We need, we need more things in media of that are good uh, role models for young women that show women as being strong and independent and able to take care of themselves and kick ass. I think it's a good thing. Not enough of it. The media usually portrays women as being needy or can't be complete unless they have some man in their life or... Or they got to be dressed up, or they have to be rescued, or whatever. Dressed in a certain way, they have to have yeah. got to wear stiletto heels. I mean, for God's sakes, you can't kick ass with those stiletto heels, can that's you? That's right. That's right. Uh, there was some movie. Uh, I think it's called <laughs> Salt, which I think uh, Angelina Jolie was in. We got the DVD, yeah. Yeah. and she yeah. plays yeah. like a James Bond kind of a, a spy character, yeah. and she kicks ass like. I mean, she makes James Bond look like a total. Plus, Sissy. I mean, <laughs> it's like she's like just karate chopping people like left and right. Let's see, getting this up there. Yeah. Ooh. There. Stiletto. Look at those are mine. Those are your gems. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh. Let's That's see it again. Hold on. Hold on. Those are. Those are five-inch heels. Wow. And I don't you can see they're fetish shoes. Wow. And they're the heels are shaped like. I'll see if I can get it close enough here. Are shaped like little men's um, penises. Oh my god! Oh my god! Because they're they're called the the body part shoes, and they're designed by a Canadian designer um, for um, AIDS, AIDS. Uh, Some AIDS organization. AIDS. Then. Yeah. AIDS research. Yeah, to support to support people with AIDS. Yeah. Wow. I got a. Yeah, so I've got like crazy shoes. That's I bet my you thing. cut quite a stunning figure in five-inch heels. Like you're tall already. You're probably kind of towering. I, always, I, it's funny because I, I wear well. I don't wear heels on the weekends because I'm at home. But at work, I almost always wear heels. They're my heels are between three and a half to five inches tall. Wow, so you're kind of a glamazon. Well, I've never thought of it that way, but. Um, I'm certainly taller than the average person in the college. I, actually, I'm taller than everyone at the college when I wear my shoes. Uh, do you do you hit the six foot mark when you've got your shoes on? Oh, far far higher than that. Oh wow! Cool. Yeah, so I'm, I'm when I wear my well, I'm five eleven. So if I'm wearing my five inch heels. Oh man. Four. Oh man! One time we were at a, we were in Reno, uh, just you know on a little vacation, and uh, we were staying in a hotel. And there, there's all these enormous women, and it's like the UNLV women's basketball team was playing mm. a game, and these were all these all these uh, UNLV you know women's basketball. This is NCAA. Yeah, you know, they're tall without. They're 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 huge. These are like, wow. If you you wouldn't even have been like, you wouldn't have even been like that the medium. These guys were tall. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was yeah. awesome. <laughs> So do you have a huge shoe collection? A huge shoe collection? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Well, it's not huge, huge, but um, I guess it, I could call it significant. significant. And they're, yeah, they're all designer shoes. Oh. And boots. Not oh. as payless. So I don't, buy them, I don't buy them too. Like I, so, my shoe collection is not massive because they're expensive, but I take care of them, and. Uh, they're well made, and I because when you're tall, your feet take a bigger beating because there's so much of you. 
So you want to wear really well-made shoes. Wow. But yeah, my, one of those things that my husband just puts up with, he knows that um, well, every three or four months I go and get myself a, a new pair of shoes, but they make him happy. Are they as stylish as that? <laughs> That's stylish. <laughs> See, with us, it's t-shirts. We collect like, yeah. I wear the you, we were talking about that earlier you mean yeah where it's like I collect like rock t-shirts comedy t-shirts yeah. like yeah this, it's the one you're wearing you know like uh, all kinds of t-shirts well, just Paul, collect. Paul collects bases <laughs> <laughs> golf clubs well that's more golf expensive clubs. than shoes so you yeah. got one on in there it's great he buys a new base and he's dropping a few thousand dollars on that. I don't see any problem with dropping five hundred bucks on another pair of shoes. So right. shirts are cheap. So let's see the shoes yeah. that you got on your feet right now. Are you barefoot or you got some shoes on? I'm barefoot right now. Oh, it's okay. a weekend. Okay. Well, let's see them dogs. Oh. Show us them dogs. My feet. Let's see them dogs. Oh. They're huge. I'll get you a pair of shoes. I'll get a pair. All of right. Shoes all right. Okay. So while she goes I back, you you're watching Bulletproof. Ups uh, bu let me try this again. We'll edit that in post. You're watching Bulletproof Underwear, Episode 8. Mad Mo Yukon will be right back. So what kind of shoes do you think Wait. she's going to bring? Probably long-heeled ones. I hope so. I hope so. Let's see what she you got. You guys have Bulletproof Underwear. You guys have Bulletproof Underwear. I've got Bulletproof Shoes. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's check this out. This is going to be awesome. I know it is. You guys are such freaks. <laughs> like she's talking okay. about you. Okay, there's a there's yeah. A, I, all there's right, a, all right. What is that? Kind of like a crocodile or a gator or what is that? It's, it's Kevlar. I, it's bulletproof. Ostrich. Ostrich. Yeah. Ostrich. It looks kind of like a sort of a greenish color. Yeah. Those are Green awesome. Water. Yeah. These are the. Uh, hold on. These are the. Shoes. Oh, there. those are awesome! <laughs> that That's is brutal. unbelievable. There. Okay, when we edit this, I'm going to go in tight on those. <laughs> there. So, I say Paul doesn't mind when I buy them because, like I say, they they make him smile. They say I wear the shoes and they say, "Oh, those make me happy." Well, I'll tell you what. There. I would I would deny you I would deny you nothing as far as the shoe budget. You can have all the shoes you want. <laughs> oh my Isn't god! That a beautiful that's awesome. Nice, nice carved wooden heel there. Dang, that looks like something for Louis the Fourteenth or something. Yeah. That's so, cool. Yeah. Flex. But anyways, yeah. Flex. Let's see your feet. Come on, show us your dogs. God, they're not attractive feet. <laughs> All right, Flex. Flex is regular. Flex, feet. you still have the price tag on yours. That's because uh, that's the, the cool thing to do, isn't it? To keep all the tags on. Okay, let's see your feet. This is better than showing your butts like you did in the last episode. That was... <laughs> I don't wear my shoes with socks, so my, my feet are kind of grimy. That's a mine like looks like a water skeek some 6'2". <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, yeah, at least it's... Uh, my best friend in real life is a real short fella. He's uh, he's about 5'6". So yeah. I, I like to tease him about height all the time. Oops, my green screen is all folded. Come here, you. Are you guys <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Are you guys tall? Yeah, I'm 6'2", and Flex is 6'2". Oh, okay. Yeah, 6'2", and 200 pounds. So I'm the short one in my family. Oh, really? Are you, are you are you from, like, a Norwegian, Swedish, Danish kind of stock? You look like a Viking woman. Yeah, um, Danish. Danish and Norwegian on uh, my mom's side. British on my dad's. I'm so we all have these high cheekbones. Yep. That's all the, that's the Scandi side of us. Do you have... My sister actually lives in Sweden. Yeah, you, you had mentioned that, so that's what made me think about that. So do you have, do you have the horns? <laughs> really pissed off. That's when they come out. <laughs> you don't want to see that side of me. That's right. My my wife was over, over listening in on this, and she said, "Do you have? Do you like Ludafisk?" Ludafisk. It's a Norwegian. Oh, the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking. Yeah. It's probably some nasty um, Norwegian food. 
It yeah. is nasty Norwegian fish. We do. Well, I do like um, pickled and marinated fish. Uh, my husband doesn't like pickled things, or he doesn't really like a whole lot of fish. So, if I get that stuff, I'll 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 have it, and my mom and I'll eat it. So, when I have my mom up to visit, so where does she live? But, does she live in Canada too? Yeah, she lives here in Whitehorse, but um, she has dementia, so she lives at a um, a senior's residence. Flex has dementia and, too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, anyways, what? I usually I usually pick her up on the weekends, and she usually what? lives with us on the weekends. But I took this weekend off. All right, all right. Oh. Well, we're really glad that you were able to make it here. We were like, yeah. it's like we're like, really? She's going to be on our show? Oh my god! <laughs> Nothing too fascinating here. Oh so. no, 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 no! Have you seen Have you seen the the, the parade of losers we've had before? Just kidding, kidding. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> They're not losers. They're all great. Just guys. kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Shiz was, was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. You couldn't get him to stop talking, boy. That guy's just going on and on. Yeah, he's a, he's that way when uh, you're playing in the games too. He's quite chatty. He loves Shiz. He was great. Well, I, I like yeah. him because he bitches so much when uh, when if you, if you kill him or something or he gets killed, he. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I emptied a whole clip into that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I miss playing with him. So, Shiz, if you're watching this. That's right. That's right. You know, those guys have gone to Battlefield. You know, yeah, I know. They play Battlefield. But, uh, yeah, I miss playing with him. I miss playing with uh, Denjoga. He was lots of fun to play with. and But maybe they'll come back with Black Ops 2 for a while. Maybe so. Maybe at least every now and, and then. And Tightwad to spend that 10 bucks on Battlefield 3. So... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't, blame you. I don't blame it's you. The whole principle of just uh, you buy a game and then, you know, can't Eight, play. Ten, bucks. loaded on his oh, PlayStation man. first, so I couldn't play it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, hey. Homefront is the same way. You know, the, whoever uses it first, nobody else can play online unless they buy some sort of code. Yep. Hey. I know, stupid. Yeah. So I'm not buying any more of that company's games for that reason. Yeah. Because David lives here, so we have, like, he's got his room with the big screen TV and a PlayStation, and this just the room behind me here, and then this room here is where I play mine. So this is the, this is where I play my game, right? Oops. Right there. You're watching TV while you're on a show with us? No, I'm not watching. It's just on. I can turn it off. No, no, no. But, I, I... but um, so, you know, because he lives here, I'm not going to buy two copies of every game. You just buy a Unless it's something that we're playing against each other, right? Well, you know, everybody on the same box, at least. I mean, okay, I could understand if you took that disc over to some friend's house, mm -hmm. some other place on a different box, on a different PlayStation. Okay, <laughs> you know, we're going to charge you if you want to play online. But if you're using the Your same box. actual box, yeah, it should lie. Well, even in the same house, if you have multiple boxes... What would it matter if you if you weren't playing? You know, if you couldn't play it at the same time against each other, yeah, shouldn't you be able to take it from box to box in the same house and play it? Well, you, I think you can as as long as it's on the same account. Like, because like David's got his account on his PlayStation and on mine in case he's out here playing. So yeah. it's not it's a, attached to accounts, but right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? You're 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 talking like uh, this one company is more greedy than the rest. You know what? My opinion is they all are total money grubbing, you know. Yeah. They they are just like it's a business, man. It's a multi billion dollar business. Mm -hmm. See, it ain't so. <laughs> Call of Duty isn't in it for the money. They're just trying to to provide us fun. They, they, yeah, they just want to provide us fun. They're not. They don't want to make no money. <laughs> <laughs> money. Well, it's pretty amazing that video games make more money than movies. Yeah, Have you it heard is. that? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Well, in fact, a lot of movies that are made now are based on video games. They're using video games as the... Like, like the... Uh, with the um, zombies. Resident Evil. Yeah. Those are great yeah. games. Silent. Or Those are great Silent. movies, too, by the way. I like the Silent. Resident Evil movies. Mm -hmm. Silent Hill came out with the second movie. Yep. David and I watch those things because we are getting ready for the zombie apocalypse. So, so, uh, <laughs> what's the first thing that you gotta do to prepare for the zombie apocalypse? 
you give someone that you don't like a pair of running shoes and an air horn. That's it. That's it. I, I love mm -hmm. shooting zombies, and I and I'm you know I'm getting ready to uh, you know whenever it happens because it it happened in Florida, you know that guy was eaten. Oh, I know. Wasn't that gross? That guy was a zombie. Do you watch The Walking Dead? I love The Walking Dead. That show Isn't is that a great the show? best. Even if you don't like zombies, yeah. the just the drama of it is good. Doesn't uh, what's his face? His wife just piss you off. Do you just want to go up and just slap her? Totally, totally. I gotta watch. Sure. What a Douche. bitch! God. Yeah. Yeah. And that guy who yeah. she was having the the thing with before yeah. her husband, you know, returned. Yeah. He started out kind of a good guy, but he's not he such a good guy anymore. He had his good side and his bad side, which you know I think every human has. They have the good side and their bad side. I think that some of the stupid behavior of some of the people brought out his bad side a bit you know because there is there's so many things there like what would you do in a society where all the constructs of society have disappeared you know all the things that hold law and order and and uh, uh, you know all the things that you need to have a just society are gone it does become survival of the fittest so it's this whole balancing act of whether it's survival of the fittest or whether we try to maintain some order of civilization like where's the balance there because you're in a situation with all the, the zombies coming where civilization doesn't mean squat. No, no, it doesn't. No, so, so it's a fine balancing act. So I thought that the Shane, I think was his name was, was kind of like that perfect sort of balance of what do you do in that sort of situation. So I was kind of sorry to see him go because even though he was a bit of a dick, he was also someone who you could count on to get out there and fight when the fight had to be done. That's right, right. How about the old guy with the, the RV and the sniper rifle the, with the beard? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot his name, but uh, he's a great character. He's kind of like the moral like center him. of the of the show. Yeah, I liked him, and I was also glad when he got killed. You're glad? <laughs> it was pissing me off too. <laughs> it was all like, you know, like I'm a big old socialist and everything. I am, and uh, but you know, there's a time and a place for everything. And sometimes he was all, you know, why can't we be friends when things when action needed to be taken? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. When zombies are eating your brains, it's time to That's reach right. for the fucking shovel and That's smash right. them. That, that poor little kid, that guy that they lured down the well to... Oh, yeah, lure that. Glenn. Oh, jeez, like, whose idea was that? <laughs> I like that guy. Blunt? He's got some guts. Yeah. Yeah, so did the zombie. I like the episode where he gets lucky. <laughs> Remember that when they go to that place and, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. they go into town to look for supplies and it's like, yeah. Getting busy in the apocalypse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but all around, I think it's a great show. I think it's interesting in so many. It makes you, for me, anyways, it makes me question. Well, what, how the values that I hold dear, how would they hold up in that sort of situation, and would I change my values? And I think that there's things that I would probably change. Yeah. All right. So, do you guys <laughs> have your stock of weapons and uh, and uh, pickaxes yeah. and stuff ready to yep. bash their brains in? Yep. Yep, got my snow shovel sharpened up. Are you going to hit him with a snow <laughs> shovel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got my axe out in the garage. And yeah, that's it. you got to have an axe or, you know, uh, a baseball bat or, or like a Shaun of the Dead, you know, you got to have a cricket bat. Isn't that a great movie? That was funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because my sister's name is Yvonne, and in Shaun of the Dead, they're running around and they meet Yvonne and her group. <laughs> they kind of mirror theirs. Yvonne of the Dead. <laughs> Yvonne of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. They always The guy always wants to hang out at that same little neighborhood bar. Well, that's always my threat. If, uh, you know, my, my husband, we talk about dementia. We, he, we were talking last night, we were out for dinner, and he, what would happen if he had dementia? And I said, don't worry, honey. Because he, he's just saying, just put me out of my misery. I says, no, no, no. You know that movie, Shaun of the Dead, with the doghouse in the backyard and the zombie chained up playing PlayStation. He says, yeah. I says, That'll be you. Yeah. And he, he's just like, hey. <laughs> hey, that sounds like heaven, you know? That's like, <laughs> where do I sign up? Shit. I said, I'd put him in a room and put a 24-hour loop of Beatles movies on and... <laughs> <laughs> Sit him there on the bed with his depends on, he'd be happy. <laughs> well, at least he's got somebody to change his depends. <laughs> By God, that's all that matters. Yeah. Walmart is always talking about depends. It's like, uh, you know, if you need advice, 
on which sizes and brands are the most absorbent and uh, changing schedules. He can he can tell you. Well, ah, I heard a really horrible story about those diapers, um, and I can't remember if this story came out of. Nevada or out of Ontario where there's a big huge casino but they're talking about the hotels and the increase of um, cost of staff in the hotels for housekeeping and they're trying to figure out what was going on and what it is is it's taking long for longer for housekeeping to clean up rooms because of the friggin depends to clean out of the rooms and they're thinking what if they're getting more senior citizens no it's young people and people all age are just putting those diapers on and then they're sitting in their own filth at their machines oh. and then you know changing when they get back to the hotel room into another one and and it's taking longer to clean the rooms because they got these big garbage bags full of adult poopy dipes poopy dipes it's wrong with people it's like gambling addiction <laughs> I was like, well, you don't want to leave the machine. It's hot. It just might pay off any time. Oh, oh, geez. Do you guys have casinos where you're, where you're at? Um, not in Whitehorse. For the longest time, there were no casinos in Canada except for one that was in Dawson City, uh, Diamond Tooth Gerties. And that was, for many, many years, the only legal casino in Canada. Uh, but in the last... Uh, 15, 20 years, there's been casinos popping up here and there at different locations. I think like there's one in Edmonton, and I think there's and there's one in uh, Niagara. And there's a few of them across yeah, Canada. Yeah, we can get in the car and be at, be at one in probably about an hour and a half if we needed to. Yeah, you'd, oh, you'd have to drive five and a half hours to get to one from here. So, do you have you ever gone to those kind of places? Um, I went uh, to. Reno two times with my mom that would have been um, about 23 years ago ah back in the heyday and uh, dad I went on two trips with her and um, yeah won a bit of money uh -huh. I didn't like, my mom was like she's like you know back in the day she used to go down there with dad all the time and to go gambling and then dad got sick and couldn't go so she made me go with her a couple times and I'm not really one for gambling that much but um, I was sitting at a slot machine because mom I wanted to go to bed and mom made me force me to stop at a slot machine she wanted to play on the way back to her rooms and she gave me a roll of quarters and promised me that we could go to bed as soon as I spent the roll of quarters and um, so I said fine so I sat down at the machine and I sit between two machines so I took the quarters and I split them loaded them into two machines and just started hitting the buttons as fast as I could just to get them to go through real fast. Yeah, get the heck and out of here. Yeah, and on the last hit, I got a royal flush and the machine, and I was really tired. And the machine started making all this noise and and I just looked Crowd around and said... Crowd gather around. I, well, there, yeah, there was some skeezy looking character that was kind of hanging around me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, um, and he was all excited and I just said to Mama, can we go to bed now? I just broke the machine. And I didn't realize I just won a thousand dollars and all of a sudden there's all the staff there with their suits on and they kind of surrounded me and pushed skeezy guy out of the way and peeled off uh, ten American hundred dollars into my hand, which was great because American money was worth more than our money then. And uh, yeah, so then we went duty free shopping the next day or tax free shopping. They have tax free shopping there in Nevada, so we grabbed a limousine and went shopping for the day. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a see that happens every time you go. Every time you go, yeah, you, you can quit your job <laughs> and just do that for a living. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> so Flex, are you, are you a gambling man? Bet, 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 bet. I used to be a betting man, but I liked it too much, so I had to quit. You have to be able to take a wad of money that you need for something and set fire to it and watch it burn if you but, want to gamble if you can do that then, and afford to do that then go ahead and gamble but if you can't do that don't do it that's what it is yeah i don't i don't gamble anymore because i i uh like it too much mm. well see i don't gamble because i have a system and uh you know i, I don't want to get uh you know i don't want to get arrested by the authorities oh. in the casino when they see my system because it it can't fail. I'm telling you, I got this system. Hmm. 
Actually, <laughs> actually, what would be kind of cool is if we had like a group of people that played poker. I like poker. Yeah, poker is fun. I like playing card games like here around the table or whatever. Not for real money, but like if you're playing for pennies or nickels or something like that, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I like playing hundreds. That's why I don't gamble anymore. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is it the, was it the thrill of the the thrill of the what might happen or what was yeah. the part? Oh, yeah, the addiction part was the the thrill of what might happen. Mm. You know, I mean. Did you bet on sports? Oh, religiously. Ah. Bet on all kinds of sports. I won much, much money. I bet. Here's a good one. This is this is a great one. I bet fifty dollars on the Minnesota North Stars to win the Stanley Cup back in '91. I think it was the year that they went all the way. They got to the last game and they lost in the last game. Oh my God! You probably want to go over, go over and, and like slap every one of them individually. <laughs> you just cost me I a was, fortune. I was <laughs> drunk for a, for a week. Now, see if you're a Canadian. What you do is you go out and riot and destroy your city. That's it. That's, that's right. it. You know, England has their soccer hooligans. You guys have your, your. That's right. We're very peaceable person people unless our team loses. It's a good thing. <laughs> Olympics. My God, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take a break for just a moment because I, uh, I have to take a break. I've got a pound on my nose. I feel like it's a little shiny. What do you think? A little bit shiny. Anyway, I'll be right back. I promise you. Okay. I'll visit with Flex. Okay. Ah. We'll edit this in. We'll edit this in post. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Flex, are you retired or do you work or? I just, well, I really retired. I can hear Yam's voice. Yeah. I, uh, I um, took uh, some time off to take care of my daughter when she was younger and uh, for what it costs in daycare versus what my wife makes, it kind of equaled out. So I'm, I've been staying home with her since three, since she was like two. That's and great. She, yeah, she's 11 now and she's getting to the point now where she's getting a little older, so probably in the next year or so here I'll go back I, I did network admin and uh, mm -hmm. computer support and uh, project management and development and stuff like that so you I'll probably that from home even if you yeah, wanted I'll, and I mean back when I used to do it I couldn't but now yeah I can do a lot of the stuff that I used to do now I can probably be able to do it from home so yeah. that'll be cool but no I uh I had the opportunity to stay home with her, so I did. Excellent. I think more men should do that. It was a good experience for me. So do you do the stuff around the house for your wife? Like, do the yep. cooking and stuff like that? Excellent. Oh, I, I'm Mr. Mom. Yeah. I'm well, my husband used to do that when he was playing. Like, he has a regular daytime job now, but when he was only doing music, yeah. um, uh, he would usually work, like, four nights a week. And of course, you know, he goes from eight o'clock at night till three in the morning or whatever. So um, he used to do that. He used to be the one that would um, cook the dinners and do all that stuff. Yeah. It was kind of nice. I like doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's back. Hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. See, I was using this headset thingy, you know, because the mic is good on it and, it, and I can hear really good on it, but it hurts my ears, so I like these little earbuds better. I don't blame you. Oh, boy, I feel so much better when my nose is not shiny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when that happens. <laughs> you don't need to lie. We know you just went and snorted a great big line of cocaine when we were talking. Well, there, there's where you're wrong. It was a crack pipe, okay? All right. <laughs> just had to do it in the backyard. My, my wife won't let me the do the crack in the house. The distribution method doesn't matter. 
You're a bad boy. That's it. So, let's see those dog tags. Check those out. Where'd you get them, then? I'm the going to pick one off here so I can bring it up to the camera there. Um, well, our game store here, whenever you buy things that are coming out or whatever, they always have lots of swag. We love swag. So, so I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but it's got um, the little... Oh, it does. Um, it has a little elite thingy. Yeah. <laughs> so, got that when I bought the MW3 game. My insulin pump is talking to me. And uh, when we pre-ordered the um, Black Ops 2, we got the posters. What else do we got? We got MW3 t-shirts. Also... Well, here's the uh, the little thing about uh, Black Ops 2, you know, this. Okay, register today and get locked in for four waves of bonus offers. Okay, so wave one was, of course, the posters. Yeah. Wave two was when they announced uh, Nuketown 2. Yeah. Third wave is in August. So, Next week or so. I wonder what they're going to, wonder what's going to be the the third wave. Next week. Oh, I know what it is. I know. I know. What? They send you a kit with bamboo slivers and matches, and you have to torture yourself like you would if you were in a Japanese internment. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Black Ops. Hey, uh, so this is Black Ops is in the future, and we're not fighting a country. We're fighting a terrorist who's taken over our our defense systems here. Cool. Yeah. I think we'll have concept. I think it's cool. It's coming out pretty close to Halo, but the Halo heads will, you know. Never played stick. Halo before. Yeah, the Halo heads will stick with Halo, and then Black Ops will stick with Black no, Ops. I've never so. played Halo online. I played, I played the campaign just a little bit over at my, my brother's house, but uh, I hear that if you go to play Halo online and you're a noob, you will just be annihilated because those guys, those guys are you better, whoop ass. Just a, you better be prepared to be humiliated. Yeah, yeah, because uh, those guys are good. Those Halo junkies, uh, you know, they eat, live, breathe, eat, and sleep that Halo. Yeah, well, that won't work for me. As it is, when I play the game, I'm sitting like two and a half feet from the TV screen <laughs> so that I can see what's going on. <laughs> so do you just, like, so, get over there and, like... like they're like this here to see from one side to the other where the people are coming from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I play on a. I used to play on our big TV in the living room, but uh, you know, I guess my I had pity on my wife. She got a little tired of watching me play Black Ops. You know, it was like, okay, this is like great watching you play video games. <laughs> but could just get another. So I I moved so to the desk it. here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So do you have it like on? Uh, Computer screen yeah, or something? Yeah, this is a 27-inch monitor that I do my, you know, computer stuff on. I'm talking to you on my laptop now, but right right behind okay. it is, uh, is where I play my Call of Duty and, cool. and all that kind of stuff. So sitting this close to a small screen is the same as sitting, you know, further away from a big screen. And this way my wife gets to watch TV and not have to listen to me yammer on about, he's taking, mm -hmm. he's taking me, he's taking me. <laughs> So we have a big screen, big flat screen in the bedroom and a big flat screen in the family room and then there's another big flat screen, flat screen in the room behind me here. So somebody wants to watch TV, they can. So you're not, yeah. you're private, anybody of their TV. Everyone's got a television. Everybody's got a television. So so what's yep. your favorite show right now? What, what are you into? Um, see, I'm not much of a television watcher, but... Well, Walking Dead's off right now. Um, there's that new show, Newsroom, oh, on HBO. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard that that's good. I've got to check it out. Yeah. We've been watching that uh, every Sunday night in True Blood. Um, got to see what those damn vampires are doing. See, that's kind of racy stuff, though. Yeah. I read all the books on the, the, the books first day. I read the, the series, and... Uh, TV show is good. They're not as good as the books. In the book, Sookie Stackhouse um, always ends up um, 
to having to fix the problem that the stupid supernaturals have caused. Like, they're all out there to save her and whatever, but they just end up causing trouble, and she gets pretty tired of them because they're just more trouble than they're worth, eh? <laughs> uh, but in, but in, but in the, uh, the TV show, they, um, they have a little more balance where, you know, they're all saving each other, I guess. But anyways, yeah, it is pretty racy. They've had some pretty some shows that I certainly wouldn't have my mother watching. Kind of, kind of naughty. <laughs> naughty. <laughs> yeah. And, but just for regular TV, oh gosh. I'm trying to think. Um, modern Family. We like watching The Modern Family. Is that that one with the guy from Married with Children? Ed yeah. O'Neill? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that a couple of times. That, um, he's, a, he's a better actor than I thought he was. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, but Saturday Night Live ones when they have a good guest. But we don't. I don't actually watch a whole lot of TV. Mostly the Daily Show and Colbert Report because we watch that when we go to bed at night. Those are geniuses, yeah. both of those guys. I can never decide which I like better. Yeah, they're both good in different ways. And um, yeah, but I guess the show that I watch religiously would be the news. I know that sounds pretty lame and boring but yeah i have i usually have the news channel on for cbc news cbc yeah oh that must be a yeah. canadian thing canadian broadcasting corporation oh, okay yeah. okay yeah yeah so i appreciate uh having a a news station that isn't owned by a corporation so that uh you get something that's somewhat unbiased and just normal just telling the news uh, are you are you <laughs> saying that fox news is biased i mean come on <laughs> What kind Fox. of an accusation is that? Fox News bias? Never. Fox. Oh my God! No, it's like, how dare you? <laughs> the, we the the a Fox style of news tried to come to Canada, but in order for them to come here and do the kind of news they do, we'd have to change the law in Canada. And right now, it's against the law in Canada to have something broadcast as being news that's actually opinion. It's against the law. It's against the law. It's legal to do that in the States. And so you have um, news organization there um, giving opinion as actual news, and it isn't news. And so I just think it's um, a travesty to democracy because you don't, you can't have a real democracy if you have people who don't have real knowledge. Well, that's where the internet is great. I mean, you can find the channel that you like. If you're a ditto head and you want to hear what Rush Limbaugh has to say, you can go yeah. find him on the internet or whatever. But if yeah. you want to know what somebody else has to say, yeah, you can find them too. Well, that's, that's the free speech, which is great. But it's and I, you know, I believe in free speech. I, I just, um, I hate to see what's happening to politics in general around the world, and in some countries more than others. Sadly, because I just think that um, the reason we have voter apathy and people not being engaged in democratic process and making the con their their community or country or whatever better place is because of the crap that's out there, it it suppresses voter interest. Sound bites and like, negative so advertising. Political rant here, which is always dangerous for me to go on. I should probably back away. <laughs> <laughs> I get into politics here in in my community quite a bit. Yeah, so, well, I think on the average, most uh, video game players seem to be pretty right of polit politically of me. Uh, on the average, I mean, I don't know what the, what's up with that, but it, mm. it, uh, that's what I, I, I you know, I, I'm with you there, sister. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like to talk about it too much, especially not on the Bulletproof Underwear Show. We're not about politics. We're going to talk about other things. We're going to talk about I don't know, crazy shoes, <laughs> Bulletproof Underwear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, yeah. now the offer I made to Flex, I'll make to you, and I'll double okay. it. Thirty-two dollars to drop trowel. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let me. No, can't do. Okay. Hold on, hold on here. Where's my money here? You, and I already, no, can't you haven't do. seen the green. You haven't seen the green. Come on now. It's like I'm. I'm not just. Uh, I'm not just whooping. We're talking. We're, we're talking. I, I, I saw you guys' cracks the other day. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Okay. So here's. 
Here's 40. I got 40 American dollars. <laughs> that's that's more than twice what Flex did it for. Yeah, our money's worth more than yours right now. That's yeah, sad. but it's the great, thing but is, not cutting it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. If you give me that much, I won't drop trout. <laughs> I'd have to give you a stack of loonies and toonies. <laughs> loonies and toonies. How long have you had your loonies? I don't know. We've forever. We've had them for a long time. Wow. I'm trying to get back to eat lying around to control cool. you. See, that's probably not good for video games. Probably now that uh, dollar coins are common, probably uh, if you go to arcades, probably everything costs a dollar now. Are there still things with arcades around? I don't know. I started playing video games at arcades. Asteroids and uh, and uh, Defender, no, no, no mm. Defender and uh, what's that one where the the things are coming down? Space Invaders, that's it. Space Invaders. <laughs> Back. Yeah. Back in my younger days, that was what video games were. I think the first video games that I played would have been. Um, there was a bar in town that had those tabletop video yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. So, you, yeah. and one of them was Volified. And the other one was Pac-Man. What was Volified? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of how you explain it. It was, uh, uh, gosh, I can't even, I think there was like glowing orbs that you had to get to before different monsters on different screens got you. I can't even remember now. I can't even remember. <laughs> it's so long. And besides, I was, you know, fueled with a... Um, various libations <laughs> see that was a brilliant idea to make the the video games on a flat table that you could spill your your beer or whatever on and just wipe yeah. it right off yeah. yeah and then when my when my son was just a wee little guy I bought him he had the, the Nintendo with uh, Mario ah Mario I oh, can't yeah. which version it was there's only been two or three Marios in the history of gaming right <laughs> I have no idea. But anyways, it was the it was the Mario game. Yeah. And so he grew up playing with games and he's an excellent gamer. He plays all sorts What's of games. What's his gamer tag on, on uh on PlayStation? I forgot. Mnemonic. That's it, that's it, that's it. And if he just joined the clan just as he was leaving town. So when he comes back he's gonna help us with the clan ops, which is good because we need people that can actually <laughs> some players who can shoot some folks. Yeah. He's a whoop ass. He's a whoop ass. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, yeah. So the PlayStation Sub One level forty. Yeah, I know. Cool. So I was going on there this morning with um really early this morning. I know it's so exciting. Um, Maxwell and Hokey and uh, uh, some new guys. There's a lot of new guys. Uh, got on this morning and we're trying out new guns, leveling them up. That's fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I love playing with those guys. Yeah. Well, Maxwell, of course. Maxwell's always hacker, hacker. Oh, you camper. Oh, you camper. Oh, you hacker. <laughs> <laughs> so I was giving him a hard time this morning. <laughs> it's double weapons XP. Yeah, that's people. right. You can rank up your guns. Oh, so, yeah. So I'm trying out guns I've never tried before just because I can get some points on them. That's right. I'm ranking up my 1987. Ah, mm -hmm. ACR. I think it's called ACR. I'm working on. Oh, the ACR that's is worth amazing. it. That's worth it. Yeah. So, are you going to play so, the clan ops today? I think it's three o'clock our time. Well, maybe pretend to, Next, probably. We'll see. Next so I'll have to get full over. Want to go to the gym? Get a workout in. Got to flex the guns or the pistols. The guns. All right. Yeah, maybe go do a half hour run or something. Wow, so you're actually and healthy. <laughs> try to be well, I know you. I know uh, that you eat good, yeah, because uh, you're always talking about the, the the stuff that you're cooking, and it always sounds really good. I like cooking. And yeah, you know that's like the good stuff. It's not like this crap like microwave burritos that I eat. Oh, I don't eat that stuff. Well, I I, I um, have to take insulin to stay alive, and uh, you know it's best to keep your health. Uh, like my dad had diabetes and he died at a fairly young age of three terminal illnesses brought on at once through years of his body being not taken care of with the diabetes so 
So we eat really well. It sounds all fancy and everything, but it's really easy to cook fancy food. It really is. So. Well, you got to tell my wife. She doesn't cook that much. Cooking, <laughs> 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 and uh, I cook uh, four days a week, and my husband cooks three days a week. But on his nights, oh. it's usually stuff where he'll, um, you know, either take me out for dinner or, or uh, he'll go buy one of those um, rotisserie chickens or whatever. <laughs> 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 and on the days that I cook, I'll actually cook something. Cop <laughs> out, cop out. Oh, it's not a cop out. We went out last night for a really good dinner at a place called the Cork and Bowl, and um, it had I can't remember what the wine was we were drinking, but it was really good, and. Um, uh, they had macaroni and cheese there, but it was cooked like with all the fancy cheese yeah. and big chunks of lobster in it. Lobster Whoa! Really oh my God! So I had a little little container of that, and then I had a some other thing. I can't remember what it was. Some sort of hors d'oeuvre thing. Yeah, felt a little bit sick afterwards because it was really rich. But oh, if you ever want? Oh my God! Decadent lobster macaroni and I cheese. I love lobster. Nice and I love macaroni yeah. and cheese, and especially like that kind yeah. of good gourmet macaroni and cheese. Yeah, yeah. So that's what Sweetie cooked for me last night. <laughs> <laughs> he gets credit for that. Yeah, we big time. <laughs> <laughs> he got lamb chops. Extra yeah. credit. Yeah. Yeah. So Flex, are you a cook? Do you uh, do you get in the kitchen? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I had a gastric bypass three years ago. I weighed four hundred pounds. Really? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had a gastric bypass, lost 200 pounds, changed my lifestyle, uh, started eating healthier, started exercising, doing all the things you're supposed to do, you know. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty good cook, and we eat pretty healthy. So a lot of, a lot of pork, a lot of chicken. Uh, the secret is ground turkey instead of hamburger. Yeah. Ground turkey is excellent. Ground turkey is like, and, and in a lot of cases, you can't even tell the difference. My wife can make chili. They, you can't tell the difference between her chili and chili made with regular meat. I mean, it's just. Wow. So. That sounds good. I love chili. I grew up in Texas. Chili's great. Yeah. Mexican food. Do you guys, have, I bet you guys probably don't have a ton of Mexican food up there. We have um, two Mexican restaurants. One is actually run by a woman from Mexico and it's all authentic home style Mexican cooking. And it's, it's all slow cooked, it's like this all cooked from scratch. So if you go there, you be prepared to wait for a meal, but it's always really good. And then we have one that's more like your, what you'd think of as a Mexican restaurant where there's lots of things like burritos and chimichangas and stuff like El that. Tomato and my son, actually. <laughs> yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's not a chain restaurant. It's a, just a restaurant owned by a couple women. My son actually works there. Ah. Um, cooks. Yeah. So, yeah, he works two jobs. He works from um, eight in the morning till three in the afternoon at one job, which is a moving company. He and or like a delivery country company. And uh, then he works from four o'clock until whenever the restaurant closes at the at the restaurant. Wow. wow. That's cool. Wow, he must be so, a tired boy. Well, he's doing. He does it through the summer to save money to either travel, like he's doing now, or to pay for his tuition for high for college. So, what's he want to do? He's doing electrical. Uh. So he's doing electrical right now, and then uh, after that, he'll probably go down to Alberta or British Columbia, go to their Institute of Technology, and take. I think he wants to do plumbing, so he wants to double up on the trades because that's where the money is right now. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, make more than an eyeglass slinger. <laughs> so what I'm hoping is when Paul and I retire in another three or four years, we can move down to BC or someplace where it's warmer in the winter time, and and David wants to come and live wherever we live in the same community, and yeah. He can make lots of money and support us in their old age. <laughs> and have somebody to change the depends. That's right. <laughs> kind of sweetie. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad he's doing that. And I, and I hope he does kind of follow us wherever we retire to because he's the other apple of my eye. My 
my happiness is complete when I'm at home here with my family. So I like being surrounded by them. I know he's going to get married and go off one day, but, you know, the more family I have around the bed. Okay, so you said you're a grandma, so uh, your grandma and these are from uh, your daughter, your other son, or? Uh, we are, we've got um, sons down, living down in um, Alberta and British Columbia, and one of the sons down in BC has two children and pregnant with a third. Ah. So, yep. Yeah, so. Oh. Spoil them, rat. We got a grandson and a granddaughter, and we don't know what the one on the way will be yet. Oh, okay. So, are you are you hoping yep. for anything in specific? A healthy baby. A human. Just, yeah, human. <laughs> no, no tails or you know webbed <laughs> fingers or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, life goes on. You know, kids grow up and they do. You do, and oh my goodness. So you work... I work... Oh, you, I sorry? was just going to ask you about your work. Yeah, tell us. Well, I, I work at a post-secondary institution, and uh, it's kind of funny because there's only one in the Yukon, and uh, I see people coming in and um, going to school that uh, are children of people that I babysat when I was growing up. <laughs> 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 yeah, and you start feeling old. <laughs> yeah. I work at a, I work at Yukon College, and uh, I'm uh, I guess the assistant to the dean, and I do the finances and HR for one of the divisions there, and um, yeah. So you're gonna retire I, in three or four years? I hope so. That's the aim. Cool. More power to you. Yeah. I'm gonna have to probably work till I die. I'll be dropping dead mm -hmm. at the desk here, dispensing eyeglasses. <laughs> well, when I retire, I don't think I'll stop working. I just think that what I'll do is um, work part time doing something that you know doesn't is really low stress. Like the job I have right now is pretty high stress, but you know I'd be happy working at a bookstore, or making coffee, or whatever. Just something mindless where I could just be cheery and chirpy and chat with people, yeah. and uh, do that two or three days a week, and and then spend the rest of the time. Killing people on Call of Duty. No, <laughs> doing, no doing things I like doing. I like golfing with my husband. And oh, you golf? Like Not very well, but yeah. I used to golf. Uh, I gave that sport up. I got I got really good at throwing clubs a long way. <laughs> <laughs> it was prerequisite to me getting married to my husband was that I had to learn how to play golf before I met his family. So. Oh wow. Because <laughs> they're all golf, you know, his dad is a golfing fanatic, and his best friend who's married to his sister is a golfing fanatic, and we were going to go down to where his family's from to get married, so I had to learn how to golf before we went there, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he golfs really well, and, uh, and he graciously puts up with my feeble attempts. Well, even if you're not very good at playing, it's a, it's a nice looking environment to be in a golf course, you know, all those rolling hills that are green and trees and the, all that stuff. Yep. A good walk ruined. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, you and I, yeah, we probably get to hit the ball way more times for our money than other people do, so it's a good that's deal. That's true, that's true. Yep. You know, somebody who's a really <laughs> good golfer, they hardly ever get to play the, the game. They're just like waiting for other people. Sure. Hold on a second. Come here. What's going on? What are you guys barking at? There's something going on outside. You feel warm like the sunshine. There. There. Oh. There. Oh, yeah. M mug so for excited. the camera. Mug for the camera. Hey, Chica. Chica, do you want to go for a walk? No? Bulletproof underdog. Yes. Well, he, she's got camo um, clothing. She's camoed. <laughs> <laughs> Camel clothing, her and Buddy both. I put a picture of them up on the website with their camel clothing on. Well, she's kind of got yeah. natural camo, too. Yeah. Well, she's a good little dog. Yeah. She's got herself her little... Uh, oh, she's got a little, fluffy mane kind of thing, or chest. Whatever yeah. that is on the dog. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I found out what hackles are. You know when you say, you say something that raises your hackles? Our dog get, gets these the right on the sh the back of the shoulders and just below. Oh, yeah. When she gets mad, nothing, she, the hair yeah. stands up. And this. There's nothing more ferocious looking than a chihuahua with their hackles raised. 
I know. The tail gets like back. straight up and there's like, ah! With Chica, when she gets angry, her little flues start shaking really fast. Her little what? Flues. F L E W? Flues? They're little. They're little, um. They're little lips. They're called flues. Yeah, that, like, just like that. You look like a little <laughs> chihuahua. There you go. <laughs> well, I got some whiskers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, so do most women my age. I haven't been blessed with that yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, oh, we, we were just watching, I, just last night there was a commercial for some product that takes off skin tags, Tag Away. Have you ever heard of that? I saw the commercial and it was some kid who was scared by his mom's skin tag and I thought, oh my God, they just do anything in TV now, don't they? Like, Mom, I yeah. can't even look at you with those skin tags. It's so disgusting. You disgusting woman. Get rid of that skin tag. Oh my goodness. Like, I want, I want the, to things, twist them. the things we do to our human bodies, eh? Instead of just realizing that our human bodies are miracles of nature and uh, be proud of the way you look and what you got, you know? So, no plans for collagen and, and Botox and, uh, you know, all this kind of junk? No. <laughs> Not me. Yeah, I hate celebrities who do that. You know, Nicole Kidman used to be really, you know, really gorgeous, and and at some point, she she did a, you know, a facelift thing, and it's just like I'm sorry, you know, she doesn't look normal anymore. She looks weirded out. Yeah. Lex, are you gonna have yourself any face work done? Any body work done? What's that? We're talking about facelifts and things. You gonna have any work done? Oh, I've already had two normals jobs. <laughs> I don't like that kind of work. No, no, no. I'm not going to have any body work done. Um, mm -hmm. Well, let me see. I had, uh, I had my nose completely constructed because it was broken four mm -hmm. times. And well, that's not, that's just being repaired. <laughs> yeah, and then after that, I had to have uh, one of the sides of it opened up further than the other side, and then I'll tell you. That kind of surgery is really painful for me, so I no. Well, so I'm interested. You know, you talked about your ga gastric bypass. Um, did you find did it really like change your appetite, or was it just that you couldn't eat as much, or or um, and and and, t and tell me about the things that really changed about your life afterwards. Portion portion control is one thing that that really became an issue because you've only got this little pouch and only holds so much and you've got to be very diligent about how much protein you take in, how much carbohydrate you take in. You know, you can't eat too, you have to eat a certain amount of meat, you can't eat too much fruit or vegetable, you know, so you don't want to run yourself short of protein or all sorts of weird things can happen. Um, after the bypass, um, my knees, my ankles, my feet were just like caving in. After the bypasses, I lost weight. I could start to walk again. I could take my daughter for walks and stuff. I could take her to the zoo, which was cool. Um, you know, there were a few detrimental things. The, the, the big detrimental thing was my back caved in on me. My core muscle group just completely dissolved. Mm. And so I had to go to a month, a three month uh, physical therapy, intensive physical therapy program to rebuild my back. And we did that. And then. I got into the kidney stones every three to six weeks mm -hmm. for about a six month period we went and it turned out that I, didn't, I had very low citrate and very high oxalate in my system so it was forming these stones like popcorn okay. and so there were some up and, uh, you know there were some ups and downs after the, the surgery um, overall I think more than anything, it forced me to change my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm that type of a person. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I need a push. And this, that surgery for me was the push. That was the tool, and that put the tools in my hands. And then I, you know, figured it out. Then I was like, oh yeah, exercise, good thing. You know, mm -hmm. uh, eat good food, good thing. That you know. Whereas before I was eating, we were eating out as a family. We were eating out three or four nights a week. I was eating at McDonald's two or three times, mm. four times a week, you know, eating breakfast there, and uh, it just wasn't working, and I don't do those things anymore, so, yeah. you know, I 
I stay at 60, about 200, 205 pounds and a half for three years now. Well, you look good. That's, that's excellent. You know, I think that with um, food, that as North Americans, we've really for we've really lost the concept of what a portion size actually is and what real food is. Yeah, people think um, that a portion has to be this huge, yeah. massive amount of food, you know, piled yeah. up to make it to look make it look good. It's like that isn't what makes it look good or taste good. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah. it's as you're simple. saying that, I'm wanting to go to the Black Bear Diner because they got a chicken fried <laughs> steak. <laughs> It's about this big around. <laughs> I know. Then Joe was talking about chicken fried steak or something, and I asked him what that was because I've never heard of it before, and he said it's the same as um, some chicken fried steak. And honest to God, I don't even know what that is. A cheese steak. No, he said cheese steak. No, 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 no. Chicken, chicken cheese steak or something like that. And I don't even, like, I've never heard of that before, so I had to go on the Internet to look it up to see what it was. A cheese steak or I think a chicken fried steak? A, a, che a cheese steak. I think it was a cheese steak. He was talking about a chicken cheese steak that he was eating at a baseball diamond. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, um, and then he said it's the same as a cheese steak, and I thought, oh, I don't even know what that is. So I went and looked online and thought, holy my, go my goodness. They're good. <laughs> They're good. They're just not good for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, they start off with these incredibly thinly sliced, uh, well, usually it's beef, and then they throw it mm -hmm. on a griddle. You know, uh, you know, one of those flat metal things, and cook it up. It cooks fast. It cooks real fast. And they throw in some peppers in there, and then they uh, mm -hmm. put it on a bun with a uh, with cheese, and it gets all melty and gooey, and the cheese and the and the peppers and the and the meat. You know, just a, like a big bunch of like this little thinly sliced cooked steak. Mm -hmm. It's very tasty. Now, chicken fried steak. What about that? Have you ever had that? No. Oh, I love chicken fried steak. It's uh, it's like a, it's kind of a meat. It's like a steak, and it's coated just as if it's a piece of fried chicken. That's why they call it that. So it's like beef. It's beef with a crust. Oh. Yeah, and then they serve it usually with white gravy. It's healthy and up steak. Well, I don't know they, if it's healthy. They, I mean, they, they help you up steak by putting breading on it, and deep frying it. Deep frying it, yeah, deep frying it, and then it's covering it's it with white good, gravy. It's good cream gravy on top to healthy it up even more. But it's good. It's good. It's a southern. <laughs> it's a southern thing from the American South. That's where it comes from. And I grew up in okay. Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, never, never heard of it. Never seen it before. So if Paul and I ever get go on a road trip through the states we'll have to try it yeah well sometimes you know I, i'm kind of an aficionado of, of chicken fried steak black bear diner i love that place you get a plate and the and the chicken fried steak is hanging over it's too big to fit on the plate <laughs> you have to cut it from the middle <laughs> now that's a portion but that's definitely a portion i couldn't handle yeah yeah well, i was just thinking um um, I worked at the college uh, helping to put together Weight Watchers at work groups from time to time. And uh, so the whole concept of health and healthy eating has always been interesting to me and healthy lifestyle and what, what it does for people, how it changes their life. So our group of people, we had about uh, 25 people and over the space of two cycles, so it would have been two cycles of 26 weeks. So. Yeah, so whatever that is. Um, we lost our group lost um, a, over fifteen hundred pounds. Outstanding! Wow. Yeah, and it was just interesting. That's why I wanted to hear your story because it was really it was interesting to see how um, not only the weight loss but adopting a healthier lifestyle because there are also Weight Watchers is also about moving more and going out and walking or getting whatever exercise you like or whatever, and how that changed people's lives and lifestyles around. And it's just a uh, I'm always interested in seeing, hearing about that. So, and it really changed the um, a lot of people at work, how they felt about themselves. And like, there's cool. this one woman there who lost over a hundred pounds. And like, every time I saw her, she was always had this big smile on her face. And yeah, I never used to see her smile before. And I just thought it was really neat. It's just because she was just really happy with herself. And you know, you go up and down the stairs with her legs hurting and everything else. You know. So did you you organize that group? Well, there you go. Cool. 
uh, doing an organization now to see if we can get enough members to get another group going starting in the fall semester. So, yeah. Well, so you know, I, I've got something else about Weight Watchers that uh, not not quite as noble of an idea. My wife used to be a member of Weight Watchers, and and I went to a couple of these Weight Watchers meetings with her. Weight Watchers, she's she's listening to me talk. <laughs> <laughs> And what I noticed is like, uh, you know, the, there's probably about, you know, 29 women and one guy there, maybe that, that's an exaggeration, but the, the, there's like way, way, way more women than guys. Yeah. And uh, there were some good looking gals there. I'm thinking, hey, you know, if a single guy wanted to, you know, wanted to, to, to put, a, <laughs> put his game on. Yeah, go to Weight Watchers. Go to meeting. Weight Watchers meetings. Yeah, it's like you got, you know, that's like pick up, pick up chicks. <laughs> <laughs> so all you single guys out there, and I'm not one of them. Uh, it's like if you're looking for a place, you know, to to score, you know. Oh, me neither. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, it's like, you know, and if you have a particular thing about large gals, I mean, you could probably find something there that would... Uh, Some, something, a size to fit every shoe. There is. Put, eh? Shoes well, that's what I noticed there. There's like, there's like you know, very very well, large people there, and there are people that are not so large. It's like, what the hell are you doing at a Weight Watchers meeting? They might be lifetime members. Like, um, if once you get to your goal weight, you have to weigh in once a month. You don't have to go to meetings, but you have to weigh in at least once a month. I used to work for Weight Watchers. Um, I don't anymore, but uh, but uh, yeah, you have yeah. to weigh in at least once a month if you're um, at your goal weight. My mom used it. Did real well. She you, mm -hmm. she like they they like the point system. It worked real good for them. Well, she that's the, thing about the points. It makes it easy for people to count calories. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's all about. It's it doesn't matter what system it is. Um, it's all about calorie reduction and Weight Watchers works because the points make it easy for people to you know to um, understand how many calories they're eating right yeah. I think anything that, that causes people to pay attention and like any program that people would get on would have some success just because it's gonna attract people that are motivated to mm -hmm. if it's a program and they're gonna get involved and they're gonna follow whatever it is yeah. It's going to help them out. So, yeah. So, and if there's the aspect of um, of peers uh, <coughs> doing it with you, then you, you know, like they have all sorts of apps that you can get now where you can just do everything on your own, but you can have friends and everything. And there's oh. probably forums you know, and stuff too, right? Yeah. There's probably like photographers. Yeah. This is that a great program? I love it. I love I it love, too. I love the way it tracks for you. Yeah. We're and using. You, yeah, we're using this fitness uh, based website that you can use to track your uh, entire fitness package if you will you can you can track what you I think you can track what you eat what you do what you everything you, I mean, yeah you can track whatever kind of exercise you do whether it's walking or whether it's running marathons or whether it's strength or whether it's swimming and it's kind of half part tracking what you're doing but it's also um, We've same. got forums on there for like you can join up with people with um, the same interests, and there's challenges and quests and things, so you can challenge each other. Um, cool. So to to you know so so like if I was challenging Flex, he might has his exercise might be say swimming and walking, where I'm doing weightlifting. So even though we're doing different exercises, we can challenge each other to see who gets to whatever level we're going to first. You know. All right. So it's kind of, so it's got it's got that video game aspect Losing to it, weight where and you're competing, where you're leveling, you're leveling up. Yeah. And where you're winning badges for getting quests completed and one thing now, or another. If so if you beat Flex at one of these at one of these things where you challenge him, are you gonna teabag him? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, eh? That people, that people get all humiliated and everything. Oh God, it's just a video game. <laughs> it to someone this morning. I have to you admit. You teabags? <laughs> well, they were just 
sitting there camping in a corner, so I walked up behind them and beep, 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 and then stabbed him. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. Just, one. just so that he would see the replay and it. Yeah. I was talking before this, the, <laughs> the before time. we got you on the Skype call. I was telling Flex about the first time I ever got teabagged, and it was like I deserved it because I was like camping hard, you know, uh-huh. gun pointed. <laughs> Uh, you know, at a doorway, and uh, it's like a guy comes up behind me and gives me a good, solid tea bag, and then <laughs> just knifes me. And I saw it on the replay, and I'm like, yeah, I, I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> I love killing people in, in funny ways when they're not expecting it. I was, would, I'm trying to remember, is it called Lockdown? What's it, which map is it where you're running around, um, and it's got that kind of open square where there's buildings above and holes that people shoot yeah, down in it? Yeah, Lockdown. Um, yeah. Locked. So there was a guy hiding behind some barrels right beside the room that's got the mannequins in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was kept shooting everyone coming up that alley. So I went into the room with the mannequins and there's a window right beside him. So I had my gun pointed at his head and he was just standing there the whole time. So I stood there for quite a while just pointing at him and going like this here and everything. And then finally I just shot him and I thought, oh, I hope he takes a look at that. <laughs> and, uh, and then other ones where you, like, you're right in front of someone and you're, <coughs> there's they're standing there, but you're squatting in front of them, and they don't see you, and you just stay there as long as you can, and then kill them at the last minute. That's kind of fun. It's kind of passive-aggressive, but it's fun. Yeah, well, on Black Ops, what's fun is uh, if you're using a, the crossbow, and you get somebody, and they're, they're stuck. It's like, yeah. oh, no, I'm going to die. There's nothing I can do. Yeah. yeah, I wish they had that in MW3. Yeah. So I always arm the Semtex for that reason. Yeah, yeah, Semtex, you're stuck. Thanks. Exploding yeah. knives in Black Ops too. So, yeah. Well, I got some Exploding. achievement, some some, you know, some uh, emblem or something, because uh, I don't even remember what happened. But you have to shoot your enemy's claymore or bouncing Betty, cause it to explode and kill them. So mm. if you shoot their their claymore, it'll blow up and it'll kill them. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hundred ways to die. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Well, we've had a long visit here. Yeah. I think we've up and shiz. It's been two and a half hours. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it's gonna be edited forever. Nah, there nah, you. nah. We're gonna stick it up. If you don't want to see the whole thing, you don't have to see the whole thing. You know. Uh, yeah. That's the way I like. It. It's like. You know, catch what you want. But if you want to really get in depth, you want to know Mad Mo. You can you can you can watch here. All right, so it's not you know about me. I'm a bit I'm a bit goofy. I don't take a whole lot of stuff seriously because life's short. Then you die. Learned a long time ago that you know it's not it's not the houses you buy or the cars <laughs> you drive or whatever friends you make and the fat people in your life that are important. Like I keep thinking, what's going to be important on my deathbed? So that's where I put my focus. All right, Mo. Don't be don't be too upset if I lose your games for you because I don't care. Well, I I try to win, but I don't get bent out of shape. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> not a rage quitter. Not a rage quitter. So I'm not a rage quitter. All right, so we're gonna do the outro here. So if you've been wa- it's like if you've been watching bulletproof epi- bulletproof underwear episode eight up to this point. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, you have no life. That's it. That's <laughs> it. But you did get a chance to hear some uh, some fun conversation. You got some awesome coverage. So I'm your host, Yam Juice, and uh, it's my co-host, Flex. And special thanks to our extra special guest, Mad Mo Yukon slash Toby Pace. Mm-hmm. All right, here it is. Let's do it. One, oh. two, three. Ah! Ha, 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 ha.